the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I prayed with all my heart for this meeting, and I trusted the Lord, and I still do that he truly will visit us i think the worship team captured it in a most profound way all the issues that we may need the hand of god to come upon healing deliverance etc let's look at joshua chapter 6. the book of joshua chapter 6. there are a few lessons we can learn the Bible already records that everything that is written in the Bible is for our learning that through the comfort of Scripture we might find hope. Joshua chapter 6. It's a very interesting story. Um, the Lord opened my eyes to a very deep mystery here and I want to share part of it with us. Verse 1. Okay, it's projected. Now Jericho was straightly shut up. Why? Because the children, because of the children of Israel. And it says, none went out and none came in. Imagine, ladies and gentlemen, a situation where a city is shut. Nothing is allowed to go out through it. Nothing is allowed to come out. It's a description of the lives of many people. The Bible says this city is shut in a way that nothing can go out. And it means it cannot receive anything. It cannot give and it cannot receive. Are we together now? And then the Bible says, verse 2, And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho and its king and the mighty men of Velo. This is God speaking. Verse 3, and ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shall thou do six days. Verse 4. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. Verse 6, and Joshua the son of Nun called the priests, notice now, and he said unto them, take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. Now look up, we're going to continue, but the Bible is describing something very interesting here. Do you know that the surprising thing about this scripture is that the purpose for fighting that land was not to occupy Jericho? The Bible never said they fought and they said, let's enter. So what was it about Jericho that they needed to destroy it to continue their journey? I thought that they would fight. God said, I've given you the land. How can you wait seven days, fight, defeat a city and then keep moving? That meant Jericho was not just a city. Jericho represented something that was a deep mystery. The Bible says nothing could go into it and nothing could come out. Meaning, if you found yourself in that city, there was no possibility of connection with any environment outside. Nothing could go out. Nothing could come in. Are we together? A city so fortified, the Bible says five chariots could hang on the fence of that city. And then, Joshua, the son of Nun, notice the strategy. In order to defeat this city, he said, I know you have men of war. But now I need the priests, not men of war. Gather the priests and then introduce the Ark of the Covenant. And then surround, keep going around that challenge with the Ark. 
Notice this. Don't talk. Don't do anything. Just carry the ark and keep surrounding that city that is so fortified. There is no human way of crumbling that city. But he introduced the ark. Listen carefully. And he said to carry that ark. And for six days, all I want you to do is to gather the priests. The ones who mediate between God and man. Carry the ark. A symbol of the strength and the presence of God. Because he was trying to show Joshua that what you see is not all there is. If you fight physically, there is a force that makes Jericho Jericho. And that even if you pass Jericho in peace, Jericho will not leave you in peace. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It was not the issue of occupying. Is that something needed to be broken in Jericho for their journey to be successful. A city, you can't see the king, you can't see the citizens, but the city is fortified. Nothing can go out. Nothing can come in. When the Lord, look, let me tell you something about God. The tools that he uses tells you what challenge he's fighting. When he went to Egypt, he didn't say, Moses, let me show you how to use the sphere and a gun and whatever. He said, no, Egypt is not just Egypt because they have men of war. There are spirits. And so take this rod. Now he's telling, he's telling Joshua, Joshua, this challenge you see, don't mind the physical size of the challenge. There are entities that are standing there to make sure that no form of breakthrough comes, no deliverance comes, a city that stands as an altar within a territory. And he says, gather the priests. I thought you would confront the king. He said, leave the king alone. Carry my presence. Carry the ark. Start going around. And compass. That was the language. Just keep going around that city with my presence. Don't utter a word. Let my presence keep going around. Six days. This is what you will do. And the Bible says that they continue that way. Verse 11. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city, going about it once. And they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. Verse 15. And it came to pass on the seventh day. Listen carefully. That he rose up early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven days. Only that on that day they compassed the city seven times and it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew the trumpet. Joshua said unto the people, shout. Notice from day one to day seven, no one was allowed to talk. The only thing that was speaking was the ark. It was a communication of spirits first. There will be a participation, but the physical only comes on the seventh day. You start dealing with things physically. No, no, no. Let the ark speak what you cannot speak. When the victory has been established by the ark, your shout only manifested. What sort of war do you fight with ark? Not swords. Carry the ark. Go round that challenge. Go around Jericho. What kind of mason, what kind of engineer would deconstruct the blocks? They were not held by cement and mortar. They were held by covenants and ordinances. He said only the ark can deal with this. Listen, let me tell you this. Jericho is a representation of the kinds of situations of many people the the fortification is such that your shouting and trying to do all you know to do may not provide that solution are we together but the system here the first thing is look for the priest if you cannot find a priest then there cannot be victory you can find men of war but this one requires priesthood it is only priesthood that has the capacity to nullify the mystery that built Jericho. Are we together? The Bible says here, we have been made unto our God kings and priests. 
there is an office of the priesthood of a believer and only that office is able to address certain intricate fortifications of darkness they would have shouted they would have tried fighting and they would have died i believe if they tried to fight jericho the men of jericho would not use swords the mystery that built jericho will fight them and yet on this occasion the lord tells joshua your sword is useful but now not for now your voice is useful but not for now go around jericho those walls you see were not just physical walls those walls the physical walls you see were a representation of something he said go around it tonight the lord has brought his presence and let me tell you what has been happening in this service is like taking the presence of god and going around situations you may not understand you were not designed to understand what the act speaks is a spirit communication there is a place where you shout with your intelligence but this warfare leave it for the ark and the covenant are we together there are languages over our lives and puzzles and mysteries that only the presence of god has a solution over the bible says so the people shouted verse 20 when the priests blew the trumpet and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet the bible says the people shouted with a great shout and the wall fell down flat meaning it was built in a way and manner that it was not just by hands alone the walls that five chariots could stay sank something about the going around with the ark was doing something to the controlling powers that held that situation in other words the building was never the issue you will be deceived to think because the building is large it is a function of the engineering and here god is revealing and said joshua don't waste your time just like a situation that has been for 15 years 30 years and you may think because it has stayed so long it's just that those who have been fighting it have been fighting it physically let me tell you when the act goes round, it doesn't take long you will see a situation that you thought was so long crumble you will see joblessness all of a sudden crumble the assignment tonight is to find a priest take the ark blow the trumpet and let there be a shout and you will watch jericho notice the bible says when jericho fell down flat the bible says the people entered and killed everything inside and they carried the treasures so that city was fortified and god challenged them to destroy that but the city was holding a treasure that was needed for the next level of their lives there was wealth and blessing and the city would not allow anybody enter in or go out are you hearing what i'm saying and god said don't act like you would not need what is in jericho stay and destroy pay the price crumble the city pack the treasures and you will need it on your journey couldn't they have followed another route and passed the people since the people did not want to open and close it's a sign of peace i can just leave them but you leave them you will need the treasure that is in jericho because you see satan never has anything that is own is his own everything he has he stole it are we together carry the ark it was a powerful revelation and i began to think about how many people try to fight battles physically how many people waste their time to try to manage things no the key is to tap into the mystery of priesthood a system that can talk to spirits a system that can challenge controlling powers the bible says for the weapons it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood we wrestle not against the annoying neighbor we wrestle not against the landlord 
we wrestle not against the joblessness situation in Nigeria that every Jericho has a force behind it you fight Jericho physically you waste your time when you allow the act fight before you come there the city has given you way you never enter a city until the act defeats the city when you enter a city and try to fight the city will tear you into pieces because every city has gates spiritual fortifications there is the jericho of wealth and prosperity nothing comes in nothing goes out yet your treasure is there your life remains at a standstill because a fortification has been built so you don't challenge it spiritually so you go and start a business physical nothing works you leave the business and get a job physical nothing works after that you go and meet your uncle physical nothing works will you allow the ark to talk to the controlling powers are you getting what i'm saying now you want a job you carry your certificate and tell an uncle somewhere uncle sir i i want you to give me a job and he says bring your cv and you keep rejoicing for years that your cv is with someone and you keep it because until spirits are confronted there is no breakthrough believe what i tell you those who understand this keep triumphing cheaply by invoking the mystery of priesthood now the symbol of defeat for any people is the absence of a priesthood and the absence of an ark even if you have a sword if there is no priesthood and there is no ark there is no victory listen carefully the most important components to win the warfare of life is not the swords it's not the spheres it's not the business ideas it is the presence of a living priesthood and the presence of an ark hmm. not everybody can carry the ark everybody can benefit from the presence of the ark but not everybody can carry the ark this is a mystery everybody is allowed to partake of the implications of the presence of the ark but not everybody can carry the ark if there is no priesthood then there is no ark then there is no victory even though there is an army even though there is a sword please hear me carefully some may trust in horses some may trust in chariots some may trust in certificates some may trust in human connections some may trust in business acumen some may trust in all kinds of things but i show you how we win in life it is the token of the priesthood the ark the trumpet it is not just physical things when the gates and the doors are fallen then your sword becomes useful are you seeing that you only submit the cv when the controlling power that stands from your village and has vowed that nobody who is through this bloodline will excel is a waste of time it is vain to wake up in the morning listen carefully and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrows those you see triumphing in life are men and women who have understood the mystery of the priesthood they always allow the priesthood and the ark to precede them they will fight but they know when to fight look at me i came tonight to deliver us from a life of hustling a life of doing physical things you would think i don't know what i'm saying many people will not listen you will get up please help those on that you will get up carry certificates around life is spiritual there is no jericho that does not have spirit until the ark goes before you and until the priest carries the ark there is no possibility of victory treasures in jericho but the door is closed your treasure you can't go in you can't come out are we together do you know there was a woman there who should be saved i'm not sure rahab you can see that Rahab was part of God, the army of God. But listen, the Bible says that she was talked there. Her 
two could not go out and come in for as long as she was in there she was called rahab the prostitute until she came out of that dungeon did she become one of the the, the genealogy the lineage of jesus for as long as some of our family members and there are situations that are left it's not only treasures that were carried there some persons were also rescued everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me we prophesy everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored listen let me tell you this the more i understand the systems of the kingdom the more i see honestly that there is no hope of deliverance for many people until they find out these mysteries those who win in life are not the smartest those who win in life are not the most educated some of them by mercy they stumbled into these mysteries and you watch gates open and you are there with your knowledge wondering how unfair life can be jericho 45 nobody entered from your village your father tried fighting physically they destroyed him your mother tried doing business they destroyed her your siblings went to school god masters god phd the door said i don't open i don't receive and i don't give the lord said joshua stop wasting your time it's not about nigeria it's not about recession find a priest quickly find a priest one who is an act bearer don't just try to do it on your own i know you can fight but this is priesthood listen carefully it is the foolishness that has destroyed many proud people in our generation the bible says by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt it's not human worship it is the mystery of priesthood the priest the ark the trumpet equal to the falling of jericho when jericho falls you can fight with whatever you have when jericho falls your pure water can make you a millionaire because jericho has fallen when jericho falls one destiny helper is enough you don't need party when jericho falls one job can bless you but until jericho falls anything done outside it it's a waste of time I never fight physically physical battles are the last it is foolish to begin your journey to victory fighting physically look at Jesus on his way to the cross he spent time in Gethsemane because he knew it was not about wood and nails it was about spirits satan came to him in matthew chapter 3 matthew chapter 4 satan left him came back to him in peter he defeated him came back in judas he left him something was playing out and jesus knew that he needed to settle certain things when he went to that cross satan did not know that certain dimensions of priesthood the order the protocol of priesthood had been kept let me tell you fear any man that understands priesthood even if he's a herbalist are you getting what i'm saying the people in the world know this and they triumph from one level of victory there are business people in this nation that will never do anything until they make sure there is an ordinance of priesthood that goes ahead of them life is too fierce to be physical no sir Are we together you try getting a baby physically it doesn't work you go to the hospital doctors do their best it doesn't work you try and try let me tell you when you try a thing once twice three times it doesn't work just stop stop wasting your time stop immediately the bible did not tell us that one person was killed 
when Jericho fell. The people, the same spirit that fell the land rendered the people helpless. Even the weakest of the members of the army killed somebody. It was never about the sword. It was about victory. When the ark wins, you win. The only possibility for your failure is that the priesthood is not there. Show me the priesthood that has risen to speak over the ordinances. Our forefathers, as uneducated as they were, they understood the mystery of priesthood. Till today, many of them, we laugh at them, yet they keep getting results. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. The Bible says everything written in scripture was for our learning. That story was not just written there. God intended that someone with the eyes of the spirit can see and teach a people that you don't win battles with swords. Swords only help you possess your possession. Swords only help you manifest victory. They don't create victory. What creates victory, brothers and sisters, is the priesthood and the act what manifests victory is your sword it is true that the horse is prepared for battle but the horse does not fight until the priesthood goes the nation of israel will be going for war and they will carry swords and then they will carry priests with a trumpet look how silly it is to be going to fight they can wipe a whole nation yet there are some people with some irritating regalia and the painful part is they are never behind they are in front the priesthood they are afraid but they know what they carry they depend on the ark left for me you will kill me and the enemies are laughing and say you have come to fight us like this priesthood our generation is a very arrogant generation that's why we may never get results many young people just i'm not saying anything is wrong with intellectualism we have so we have demeaned ourselves from the reality of the realm of the spirit do you know you look at certain people and you are even annoyed because in all honesty you see the efforts i'm correcting you now you have been doing it wrongly you have been fighting a neighbor even if the neighbor leaves provided jericho is there it doesn't matter who comes back the battle is the same listen if jericho is still there leave zaria and travel to lagos leave zaria and go to us right from the 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 airport there trouble will meet you but crumble jericho and remain in your village and watch the booty of jericho look for you and come it is not by strength it is by strategy i show you a strategy tonight to command strange signs and wonders is the mystery of the priesthood do you know do you know why Saul lost his throne are we Bible students do you know why Saul lost his throne who can tell me why he lost his throne Saul did not lose his throne necessarily just because he offended God Saul lost his throne because he, of, he offended a pattern an order of operation he waited there was a man occupying the priest prophet office who was supposed to be the one to offer incense and they waited for him and the king said look you are wasting our time the people are destroying me say ah, is he not the same god we all serve the same god and he offered the sacrifice and when samuel came he said no you have done foolishly if you allowed me to come god would have established your throne forever but now that you have done this the throne is taken away from you just for the sin of violating priesthood a man lost his throne without knife no knife nobody fought him but he lost his throne. David tried to do his best to still respect him. 
he was sitting in a physical throne yet he had gotten up in the realm of the spirit show me the job in the realm of the spirit otherwise stop wasting your time with cvs around it will not work are you getting what i'm saying you just get up physically and go and harass your unbelieving loved ones i've come to you repent you must repent you are fighting physically and all of a sudden you receive casualties but when you invoke priesthood someone goes to bed in the night and sees a stranger coming and says it's time for your salvation and the person is already convicted here you come and you say look i want to talk to you about he helps you and say jesus i've been waiting because jericho has fallen are we together you meet your destiny helper jericho covers his eyes he is the one but he cannot see you and you pass but when jericho falls like the prodigal son as prodigal as that son was while the father saw him the father didn't even say so what have you been doing i hear you have been with pigs he held him he said leave the matter of the past now let me put a ring come be restored for by the arm of flesh koinonia will no man prevail you will never get a job just by physical pressing believe me you will never prosper just by doing all of these things there are many men of god some of you are here wonderful men of god they are trying to win the battle and rise in ministry physically please invite me here's my complimentary card i'm a sound man of god by god's grace i'm balanced i'm this and that and that you are and jericho is looking at you and say it doesn't happen that way jesus knew this imagine jesus going around and saying people come and listen to me for 30 years no one was interested in listening to him but when he engaged the mystery of the priesthood he came out of the waters a voice spoke hear ye him publicity or no publicity everywhere jesus went men followed him are we are we together the bible says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness let me tell you many of you your victory is already established in the realm of the spirit but the system for translating it we are there wasting time doing a lot of things many of our loved ones some of you are here you thought that okay by the time you get a job it will be all right you got a job you found out that the salary was not enough you prayed for promotion as promotion came to you all of a sudden jericho says that's not how we win i'm still here standing but tonight in the name of jesus in the name of jesus christ let me tell you you will watch jericho just like babylon fall before you it's true. listen when you hear people testifying ah huh? try to understand what made the miracle work because most of what they were doing they had done it before master we have toiled all night jesus said no it's not nets that catches fish Abba, you've been with me you don't understand how this thing works master we have toiled all night he said but i know there is a relationship between you and that fish and jesus said cast your net the net will be casted but not before he speaks it is after he speaks the cv will be submitted but not before the priesthood it is after are we together you will try to have the child but when you continue the way you are doing you will keep miscarrying forever it's not an insult let me tell you this without the presence of god there is no human intelligence that has the fortification to destroy an altar whose foundation is spiritual let me repeat myself without the presence of god spiritual intelligence there is no human manipulation that sustains enough power to crumble an altar whose origin is from the realm of the spirit what is fighting many of us is not physical brothers and sisters i know you are born again i know you love jesus christ but the mystery of covenants are territorial jesus has come to your heart but he must come to your life 
just because you received him in your heart doesn't automatically mean you are free potentially you have come into a kingdom with infinite possibilities but ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says having their understanding darkened this is paul teaching the church in ephesus he says alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them having the the tragedy is not that god lied but that their understanding is darkened and so by reason of the darkened understanding they have been alienated from the experience of that life it's not enough to say jesus died it's not enough to say i'm born again if that were it brothers and sisters many of our loved ones who have been born again for decades should not be where they were i watch people under the influence of manipulations that are not of an earthly at earthly origin and i watch the folly of men how we do our best i was once like that but no more i'm born again i've repented i've seen the foolishness of fighting things physically it has to be from the realm of the spirit first not from the realm of the spirit whether first or not the order is first from the realm of the spirit when you plant a seed it doesn't start growing outside until the growth happens there that is the part you cannot explain when it starts coming out you can now water it but the growth there doesn't need your watering listen there are powers that until the mystery of the priesthood and the ark fights some of us will never experience progress in our lives we wake up in the morning we sleep late in the night we are sincere but nothing is working are we together yes every time a blessing comes trouble must ferment itself around a family and drain everything the moment you are rising spiritually how many pastors and churches and wonderful people are like that when you are rising satan doesn't fight you you will think you are victorious the programming he knows how cheap the programming will bring you down so he can as well allow you to rise and you find out for a season everything is working well because it's like a string you will reach a limit it pulls you back are we together oh i want to marry you no problem you will even be happy three days later everything scatters i'm going to give you a job and you find out that satan does not need to fight you he already fought you with the presence of jericho and god said guys the goal is not to stay in jericho but you can't let jericho stand and reach where you are going don't pity it bring it down there is a don't just look at the fence there are captives in that place there are treasures in that place and he said let me show you it is not by physical fighting you don't have any physical weapon that can bring down that fence brothers and sisters jericho sank flat the bible records it flat this is what is going to happen to many of us tonight that's why that's why i i told you tonight's miracle service is not just for individuals it's for families enough of this fruitless trying doing everything by strength there is a system in the kingdom are we together the priesthood there are some of us here we're ministry some of us probably travel for a long time we're men of god we love god but it looks like there is a peg brothers and sisters let jericho crumble and you will see how cheap life can be there are people who have experienced the defeat of jericho but they cannot articulate the system that brought the defeat someone stood on their behalf through the ministry of intercession and caused jericho to fall for them they just found out that they entered cheaply and even a dagger brought victory so they can trivialize the existence of jericho jericho is real if you don't see it in your life a priesthood already brought it down for you are you hearing what i'm saying but everyone who must pass remember israel is god's own people what is the business between israel and Jer they had conquered other nations what do they need the treasures of jericho when you read your bible with an open heart you will see that there are gaps you have to be spiritual to get an explanation 
I fight, I defeat Jericho, and I continue my journey. But I carry Rahab. I carry treasures. There is Rahab there. Without Rahab, there is no Jesus. Without Rahab, the whole fight was to carry treasures and to carry Rahab. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. To Yahweh, to soon going to pray the Lord rejects Saul as a king and now looks at David but there was no priest to confirm what God wanted the priest that was available still wanted Saul and David could not be king God Almighty had left Saul and wanted David Samuel said no I still want Saul and God remain helpless. Think about it. God kept begging Samuel, cooperate with me because David will never be king. That God intended it does not guarantee his manifestation. Between God's heart and your result is a priest carrying the ark. That's why you can have a dream. You see yourself collecting a, a job letter you saw it in 2014, no priest. 2015, no priest. That your dreams show you Eden. Your life shows you Adulam. There's a system of translation. Are we together? And all of a sudden, the Lord now spoke to Samuel. He didn't quarrel Samuel. He said, Samuel, how long will you keep weeping seeing that i have rejected saul as king rise up carry your horn go to the house of jesse go and anoint the next king of israel paraphrasing and david remained there i'm sure david will be in the wilderness and say when will my change come the change was in a negotiation between god god already intended in god's mind this is the next king and the king will sit with sheep and say, Oh Lord, when will my breakthrough come? And God will say, The day a priest comes. All of a sudden, the priest agrees and God's will continues moving. A priest refuses and God remains. Moses was wise. He said, Lord, I already know you too well. Don't ever let us go here if your presence... If that I could not go before us, I'm not going, no. Moses said, because my going is as good as wasting my time. I, I, I know what is before us. And he said, my presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. Rest is a gift. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Rest is a gift. My presence will go with you. And I, through my presence, will give you rest. My presence will clear up the spirits. And whatever you do. When you read 2 Chronicles 20, the same thing happened. Three kings came together to defeat the people of God. And all of a sudden, the Bible says, the priests and the musicians were now in front. And they began to sing. You are good and your message endure forever. The ark started fighting them. Who is the fool that goes for war with gold in his pocket and silver? 
and the bible says all of a sudden they turn can you imagine allies together when the axe starts fighting for you is fearful are we together fearful you are standing close to danger it never touches you before it touches you something touches it the priesthood the people started killing themselves and the bible says everyone helped to kill another that's not a man fighting that's the ark fighting and all of a sudden when the last two were left he killed one and the ark said what are you waiting for and he carried the knife killed himself and when the people came they found gold they found treasures when the ark fights it fights thoroughly when you fight if your hand paints you like moses and start going down you see that they can defeat you but you carry the ark and let it begin to fight they kept the ark and they kept dagon these people brought an entity a god enshrined with spirits called dagon the bible did not show us there were any physical contact by morning dagon fell face forward on the ground the superiority of the presence of god above any enchantment and any ordinance when you see the ordinances that have been enshrined by your cultism and all of these things prevail is because the ark has not been lifted tonight we have come in this place to initiate a system of priesthood over the difficult situations of people to say lord if i want you for a few minutes just suspend the issue of job or whatever whether it is job or the issue of delay it is still the same jericho causing it any part of jericho is still jericho are you hearing what i'm saying the jericho that causes failure is the same jericho that causes barrenness it is still jericho the bible didn't say jericho do you know look at the interesting thing jericho fell flat but the woman who stayed in the fence how god delivered her that she didn't fall flat with it is a mystery we don't understand but the bible tells us everything fell down flat to break every chain 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 is to break every chain break every chain break every listen brothers and sisters we're about to pray but i plead with you in the name of the lord to believe this mystery as simple as it looks and you will watch the wonder in your life stop focusing on physical things you will cheat yourself a thousand times nothing on earth has the ability to stand on its own if anything on earth stands there is a force keeping it There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. Listen. The type of sword that kills the enemies is not as important when Jericho is down. Anything can bless you when the realm of the spirit is down. Listen. I have seen anointed men and women of God. People I know love God with all their heart. But they can never prevail in ministry. Because they have been fighting physically. 
they do everything and sometimes you wonder and say ah, look how great this brother is look how great this sister is is there no ear on earth to hear what you carry and honor you for it hallelujah listen people make all kinds of gifts for me as you can imagine people make all kinds of gifts and sometimes i see what people do and i'm shocked i say life is so unfair how can this brother this sister be this gifted and yet be begging and you see someone come out from somewhere and priesthood goes before him and in one week his life has changed they can even be sarcastic priesthood will make them take life for granted there is a system of ease that god wants to bring to your life please hear me there are families here listening you have done all you know why don't you allow god allow the ark come into your home tonight and let it go around jericho allow the ark come into your life tonight let it go around jericho and you will watch that which was dead come alive by itself hallelujah I was told recently about a young man very nice wonderful young man who loves god everything you know in life including good things fight him and recently i think something happened they stole a phone and the person who stole the phone was within the vicinity of the guy and he was sitting down the man kept the phone there and police came and took two of them together i got a text the person sent me a text and when he narrated everything that was happening i usually don't call people back but i was touched i called him i said where are you he said apostle look at my life nothing works i said how did you get to the police station he said that um, they found somebody with phone and carried him you think that's ordinary maybe that young man breakthrough is coming for him another thief from somewhere steals comes to drop a phone close to you does the police not have common sense to probe and they carry you together because there is a spirit coordinating this it looks like coincidence someone just falls from a chair just a little chair like this and all of a sudden one side of him paralyzes it's a lie it's not that chair that paralyzed him be smart people fell from trees plucking mangoes and they were fine they cleaned their hands and carried the mango and went away you fall from a small chair and paralyzes your leg no a a coincidence navigated the chair was just the scapegoat it's not about the chair tonight we are going to pray before i begin to minister you are going to say satan so you have deceived me through this situation i've been focusing on the situation whereas it is never really about the situation it is about jericho attempting to stand and challenge me i thought it was all about job I thought it was all about marriage. I thought it was all about children. I thought it was all about my background. Now I'm learning that anything would have still caused the same problem, provided Jericho is standing there. But Joshua, gather the priests. Gather the priests. Have a look at those listen look at me i want you in the mind of your spirit look at that job issue look at that issue and say i will no longer be deceived you are not the problem the problem is jericho it is never that the business cannot work it is never that helpers cannot come once jericho is still standing here nothing can go in nothing can come out lift your voice and begin to 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shout it one more time in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Tonight. Tonight. I challenge. I challenge the spirits. The spirits. The ordinances. The ordinances. The spiritual forces. The spiritual forces that are responsible. That are responsible for the physical tragedies in my life. Physical tragedies by the mystery of the blood. By the mystery of the blood. I declare. I declare that victory must be established in life. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Listen, the Bible tells us, listen, that we have a high priest and that that high priest is a man. The man, Jesus, he qualifies to be a priest, not the spirit, Jesus. The man occupying a priesthood that is higher than the ironic priesthood. The Bible says his priesthood is of a better covenant after the order of Melchizedek. A priesthood with no beginning, a priesthood with no end. That there is that eternal priesthood of Jesus. Listen carefully. We're talking about very deep foundational issues here. Jesus, the man, the priest that took his blood. The Bible tells us that he went to the heavenly tabernacle and poured his blood upon that altar once and for all. Once and for all. The advocacy of that priesthood is superior. Listen. Every enchantment and every divination on earth needs the sun to walk or the moon the bible says down listen without the sun and the moon if god withdraws the sun and the moon every cause every altar dies immediately because every other priesthood on earth or cultic depends on the power of the sun or the moon are we together and so the bible says the sun will no more give you sunlight you will not need it the moon the sun and moon they are important but i'm introducing something jehovah god himself will be the light that sponsors your altar the same way listen listen that men can say we will do the sacrifice by 12 p.m when there is a full moon and they stand and manipulate the the they use geometry and everything to tap the powers of the sun and the moon and god says these things are inferior i come with another priesthood my own self the son of righteousness i am the light are we together i want you to be tired 
of what is happening in your life and family i tell you the truth when we begin to pray and i begin to minister many of you will see cheap victories cheap victories. amen this is when you will know that this thing is not just about physical efforts do you know brothers and sisters listen let me teach you something for as long as you keep focusing on individual physical problems your frustration continues i can tell you all of them are sponsored by a central force hear me all of them the same electricity is causing this fan to run the same electricity is causing the mic to work if you want a shutdown of the source of the power you can destroy the mic the phone will still work that's what we have come to do tonight a total shutdown then you will find out it was never a financial issue you will find out it was never a health issue it was never a promotion issue it was an altar issue it was an ordinance issue pray one prayer before i start ministering lord visit the foundation of every challenge in my life and my family lift your voice and pray everyone that asked receive it lord visit the foundation why is ministry not working why is my spiritual life dying why am i not growing in the anointing what is the mystery oh god lord why the circle of tragedies one tragedy after another one tragedy hallelujah 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 please just just be silent for a moment i want to start ministering now let's just the lord is giving me instructions just just be silent stand where you are um something is happening inside outside everywhere the lord is showing me something very strange now um let me just describe what i'm seeing i'm seeing something that looks like um this thing people wear what's the name this thing that looks like a um, ladies thing that men wear that that looks like a yes that that thing that's what i'm seeing on many people and the lord is telling me on everyone that i see that thing in there is a very strange deliverance because that i'm hearing hidden glory and i want to pray please you don't don't shout don't do anything just let me flow you start bringing those people out i'm going to pray now for those group of people i'm seeing it because i'm seeing that those people no matter what you do your glory is never seen you will struggle and try but nothing ever happens now in the name of jesus i stretch my hands just silence everywhere father i'm seeing this in the realm of the spirit and tonight is a miracle service from overflow one two three and the main auditorium and those online anyone here that is a victim of this that i see by the power of priesthood i come as an ark bearer an envoy tonight and lord i decree and declare let there be deliverance now right now right now right now bring them out i prophesy i decree and declare many of you will feel that physical fire upon your head i'm praying now physical fire coming upon your head let them go let them go i command liberty they must go i come with the rod of a higher priesthood i decree and declare they must go free Restore their glory now. Jacos kapatariata, enteketa kaskotariata ji. Brakato katabalia. Hidden glory. That's what I hear in the spirit. Hidden glory. Hidden glory. There is glory, but covered in Jericho. 
covered by the fence of Jericho. Everywhere, inside, outside. I'm praying now. Please just be sensitive. Let's, let's do what God is directing us to do. Tonight there must be total victory. Total victory. Now I'm praying for families. The anointing of God will come on individuals. But it is for families. It will come on you. Once that anointing comes on you now. Know that God is visiting your family. Lord I pray now. I release the sword. The sword of the Lord. In the name of Jesus to every family. If there is a family here. Whose glory has been buried. Nobody rises. Where are they? I decree and declare now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Shakata Barakata. I don't know what altar manipulated the glory of any family here. But in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Matas Katabarata Siadabata. In the name of Jesus, I command now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let there be emancipation. Emancipation for every family. Hidden glory. Hidden glory. The Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And then we beheld his glory. The Lord is still touching people. The Lord is still touching people. Shabakatu Kadusha. That's why you came. You have done the listening. Let me pray now. Zepos kabarakatosia malakasia. Embrekete kotosu labrahasadi alash. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Something serious is going to happen here now. Now, I want to pray a very serious prayer. The Lord is leading me to pray this prayer. I just had in my spirit altars of poverty hold on just keep your hands lifted father i'm praying you spoke to my ears altars of poverty if there is any family here in an ordinance under that cause nothing works there is nothing you do physically to be able to bless the family and support the family that works in the name of Jesus, I declare right now, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, let there be deliverance now. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Altars of poverty. Everywhere, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three online. If there be anyone under the sound of my voice, whose family is under this siege, I decree and declare now, your emancipation comes tonight. For all of you in front here, I speak to the spirits. You know my voice. In the name of Jesus and at the count of three, you let them go now. One, two, three, go, go out of them now out of every one of their destinies out of their lives Shekatos Kabariata I invoke a priesthood higher than any ordinance upon their lives release their families now release their destinies now You know the lord is opening my eyes and i'm seeing a vision now you know how it used to be in a slave market that you sell a physical person and collect money that's what i'm seeing in the spirit like people with only trousers sold and money this is exchange of destinies i believe that this is very prophetic let me be honest i know some of you may not believe it 
but the destiny you are living is not your own a king slaughtered his son so that he will remain alive there are men that exchange destinies they they a king carried his future and said child the death i'm supposed to die you die it there are people like that the destiny god allocated for you you know this is not your life your dreams and your vision so something else in the name of jesus play now lift your hands i declare the spirits that exchange and merchandise the destinies of men by the power of the holy ghost at the count of three if there be anyone under the sound of my voice whose destiny has been manipulated i command now at the count of three be set free one two three be free now be free now be free now everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me hallelujah oh sephia 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 like sephia i'm hearing a name sephia who is that please let's let's hurry up there is a lot to do i want us to settle down really pray for the sick sephia who is that your name is sephia how about you madam the lord will locate the person i'm standing here and i'm seeing an angel of the lord touching the person god wants me to speak to i'll pray for all of you but in the name of jesus christ i deliver this lady now this lady on red i command that spirit that has tied down your life and your glory be gone for you it's over now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus i release you now by the power of the holy ghost by the anointing of the holy spirit be set free right now Sephia, the lord bring liberty liberty now i command those altars to leave you in the name of jesus christ the anointing of the holy ghost bad luck bad luck i take it out of your life the spirit of i'm seeing a lot of bad luck i take it out of your life now release their destinies now in the name of jesus christ hallelujah there is a lady a physical person appeared to you in the room this is a woman whose face you know like a relative physically where is that person please someone uh, you were not dreaming appeared to you and there was a conversation from that day your life never became this please don't be ashamed i want to pray for you please don't waste our time we have a lot to do the lord is ministering to me someone appeared i'm not saying you were in a dream this thing is somewhere you had a conversation with someone physical who is that person i want to pray for you please when you find that person let the person come quickly who is ola i'm hearing a name ola ola i don't know if that's the full name but there's ola ola there's someone with that name ola Please don't come out if it's not your name. Who is this? Huh? Your name is Ola. I want to pray for you. Look at me. Rejoice. Breakthrough has come to your family. This lady. I'm, I'm Kai. Look at the evil and the witchcraft I see over this lady's family. All these people are... Please help me find out. Why are they here? All of them, their names are Ola interesting come that lady with cap come your salvation has come come this lady with lift your hands over now 
Over now. Over now. Calm down. Madam, come. I'm seeing what happened. Yes. A woman appeared to me that it shall be never would be with physical. Physically. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Look at this. When was that? Last year, May. She appeared. Face to face and tell me, it shall never will be with well you. No matter how, whatever you take, that you are not feeling fine, the medicine will not work. And from that, hold on. From that day, something started moving in your body. Yes. It will move and come to your back and come to your chest area. Look at this. Are, are you seeing a swelling here? You are seeing this? A woman appears to her. I prophesy to someone here. Jakas koto parakatia. Empreke toso bataria talikata. Anyone in fraternity with the realm of darkness over your life, I curse those people now. I curse those people now. I curse those people now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Madam, I deliver you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Be set free now in the name of Jesus. The living and the dead don't have anything in common. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is speaking to me. There are some of you, all you see is dead people. All you see is no matter a bulk of your sleep is encounter with dead people i'm prophesying lift your hands the anointing of the spirit is coming on such people now in the name of jesus if there is anyone here in strange encounters with the dead by the fire of the holy ghost i command a separation now the spirit of hades i speak to you the spirit of hades christ has triumphed over you oh death Take away your sting. Take away your sting. Hallelujah. There are a number of you here. I presume you are all Ola, including this gentleman on wheelchair. That's your son. That's your brother. What happened to him? What happened to him? Accident. Since when? 2015. And he paralyzed you. You can't move now. Oh dear. We are going to pray for the sick. But I want to pray for Ola now. Just, just stand. Bring for me the person. I'm seeing like a sword coming on one of you now. Aside from this lady, there is, there is an anointing coming on one of you. Let me speak to that one person right now. I'm seeing a closed door. This is someone's destiny. It looks like I'm holding the air, but I'm seeing that I'm holding a padlock in the spirit. Whose destiny is that? Among these people standing, open, 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 open now. I command that destiny, open. Open now, open now, open now, open now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You came alone? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't worry, I'll pray for the sick, sir. If, I'm, if I don't talk, are you Allah, sir? No, don't, don't come out until I ask you. This is witchcraft. You would have died since last year, June. Yes, yes sir. It's God that kept you. I will pray for you. I've seen your case already. If I don't pray for you, in three months, you will not be walking again. This is stroke. What is wrong with you? Yes, sir. All my body. This is what I'm saying. Yes. I'm seeing three months and you're on the bed not to rise again. We have to pray. This is witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to pray for you. Come, my dear, this lady. I'm seeing a very beautiful lady in the physical, in the realm of the spirit. I'm seeing an old woman. Hold my hands. What fellowship. The exchangers of destiny. I hold the hands of this lady. And I declare right now in the name of Jesus. Let there be a restoration. A very beautiful girl in the physical. But I'm seeing the face of an old woman. Be free now. In the name of Jesus. I command the power of the Holy Ghost upon your life. I command that your destiny be restored. Your destiny be restored. In the name of Jesus Christ. For all of you standing here. My, my brother, this gentleman, come. What's your name? What do you do? What do you do? I'm a printer, sir. You are a what? Printer, printer. Nothing is working in your life. I need to pray for you. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I break this embargo I see upon your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. This row, I'm seeing deliverance. Chicken feather. That's what I'm seeing. Chicken feather. This is an ordinance over a family. Just this row. I stretch my hands now. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Kabaroko to sobaria talikata. Jakas kebarika to siyanapata. Let there be emancipation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be emancipation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right. Mama, I know that it's not time to pray, but I want to pray for you. Please come, madam. You came alone. Let her come. You came alone. I, I did my first and my heart has been here. So one of my say, son, friend, brought me here. When you are talking, everything you say is just about as if you are Where, where did you together. come from? I come from uh, Samaru. From but, Samaru? Um, Basawa. No problem, Mama. Yes, I, I want to pray for you because of something I've Thank seen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Say after me. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The suffering. The suffering. The sorrow. The sorrow. In my life. In my life. Must end. Must end. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I will eat. I will eat. The fruit of my labor. The fruit of my labor. Father, by her confession, Amen. let her be free now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that captivity is over. I pray for all of you now. In the name of Jesus. My dear, don't be embarrassed, eh? Be careful with men. Come. I'm seeing somebody really destroying your life. Don't be embarrassed. Eh? You are here. We love you. We don't condemn people. But be careful. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. The deception and the wickedness of evildoers. I pray for you now. Every captivity in our last family, whether male or female, as I stretch my hands over you, I command that it leaves you now. It leaves your family now. I say it again, it leaves you now. It leaves your family now. In the name of Jesus. For the last time now, an anointing will come on you. It leaves you now. It leaves your family now. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please go back to your seat. Go back to your seat. Go back to your seat. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands, everybody. Gentlemen, when it's time to pray for the sick, we'll pray for you. Huh? Just be patient. Please help him so that he doesn't strain himself. All of you lift your hands. One scripture, and there is fire to deliver the oppressed now. Why are you here, my dear? You are with him? Oh, is your daddy? What? Okay. Since then, there is something that has been working on his body. Like you had an slave. accident? Yes, sir. Okay, and what happened? And since then, something has been working on his body, on his stomach, like snake. At times, the thing will... Are you seeing what I'm saying? So it was never about accident, you see. Accident was just the condition that made this happen i saw three months stroke hitting this man and him not standing up from the bed again but the lord would destroy it eh? just be patient we want to pray now let me show you one scripture and then we'll pray exodus chapter 15 quickly please 6 to 11 exodus 15 we're going to do a quick walk we need to cast out wicked devils out of lives and families Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed into pieces the enemy. Next verse, to 11. And in the greatness of thy excellency, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou sentest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as trouble. And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood up right as an heap. And the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea. To 11. The enemy said, I will pursue. I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw up my sword. My hand shall destroy them. Next verse. Thou didst blow with thy wind. And the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty water. Who is 
like unto thee, O God, among the gods, who is like unto thee, glorious in holiness, comma, fearful in praises, doing, not delivering, doing wonders. That's what you're about to see now. Lift your hands. He said, I will pursue, I will overtake my lust, my desire will fall upon the people of God. I want to pray. Listen, deliverance is not just about falling down and rolling up and down. It's, it's, it's bringing the anointing of the spirit to bring a parting, a separation. The Bible says the river separated thither and hither. Separation to allow you move. I want to pray. Are you ready now? Remember that after they moved the seventh time, it was a shout, the healer a shout not just any shout a shout that was sent like a word and the bible says the walls of jericho fell down flat that shout is what you are about to do but let me issue a command in the spirit in the name of jesus christ the one whom i serve and whose i am in the name of jesus i declare over every force in the spirit the covenants and the ordinances of darkness that have held the lives of God's people as they shout this shout wherever they are I command those spirits he said when they hear my voice they will run out of their hiding I command not only an exposition but a total separation are you ready to shout Jesus at the count of three one two three In the name of Jesus, I command that fire to fall. Every power, every enchantment, every enchantment, every enchantment, every enchantment, every enchantment, every enchantment. Go now, go now, go now. Every enchantment. Every enchantment, every enchantment, be free now. Hold on. Hallelujah. I usually don't do this until I'm directed. Hallelujah. I usually see pillars of fire standing by my left and right. I just want to pass through. You don't have to touch me. Except it is not God that has called this meeting. If there is a force and a spirit it must be exposed as i pass you in the name of jesus thank you father i decree and declare right now by the anointing of the holy ghost every power every force every power every force every power every force you must go now now by the anointing of the holy ghost in the name of jesus as i pass you that anointing like fire is coming upon you to set you free be free now free now free now free now in the name of jesus be free now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ those of you outside lift your hands lift your hands I'm going to pass here right now the anointing of the spirit is going to begin to come upon you are you ready now thank you Jesus you don't have to touch me just just allow me pass be careful be careful father in Jesus name let it be over now there is fire now that fire is moving all across now in the name of Jesus ordinances be broken now I'm seeing fire just around here where my hands are in the name of Jesus let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now be free now let it be over now 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 in the name of Jesus Christ be free now in the name of Jesus as I'm passing close to you an anointing is causing every power let them go the Spirit of the Lord is telling me to stand here right now in Jesus name let there be deliverance now let there be deliverance now 
from every force of darkness every force of every force of darkness be free now I came here because I know that there are so many of you look the crowd in this place I want to pray for you I'm standing here my God look at the oppression that I see just standing here I'm about to pray right now and from the front to the back from the left to the right I want all of you to shout Jesus something is leaving people already are you ready now your destiny must be open please don't take it for granted bring them out now at the count of three overflow three one two three shake it be free now be free now in the name of jesus i command my god please help them jesus christ look what is happening here from the front to the back right now anyone here under the siege of darkness be free now be free now help them be free now lift your hands overflow three i'm praying for you are you ready to shout jesus again there are many of you you try to move forward but the force keeps holding you as you shout jesus now you're going to see something leave you are you ready father all those who have been held captive, i declare that as they shout jesus let your fire of deliverance come upon them one two three i release you now i release you now i release you now go forward i release you now delay broken i release you now i release you now i release you now i release you now in the name of jesus hallelujah listen i'm going to pray for everybody but the lord is saying there are some of you here the call of god is upon your life but there are altars fighting you i'm about to release you oh god i'm seeing 17 one seven where are they oh god right now to the back where are they they have the call of god but an altar of darkness tying down their lives Mata soto kata. be free now hallelujah i'm going to pray for you look up please there are 11 of you the lord is saying it is you that you will use to help your family and the anointing that anointing of that joseph's anointing to distinguish you is coming on 11 people lord where are they to the back right to the back that anointing a destiny is rising no even if you are the last born i decree and declare let that anointing find you now let that anointing find you now the joseph anointing the joseph anointing that will cause you to save your brethren hallelujah please lift your hands overflow three it's not about falling down although there are several things happening here but i want you to just focus the last prayer i want to pray for you many of you will be surprised what happens to you listen i'm seeing keys like a key that was missing some of you were once you were destined for certain things and the devil veered off your life and as it is right now the treasure that god gave you you have lost it as i pray for you that restoration anointing is coming upon you some of you is anointings some of you is business connections lord where are they at the count of three let that fire come shout jesus at the count of three one two three receive that grace now restoration fire 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 shake up butter please open your mouth and begin to pray begin to pray begin to pray great grace
great grace, great grace, great grace. New season, new season. Mama, look at me. It's over, over, forever. Over, over, over. Is going to use you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, everyone, pray in the spirit. 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 Please, pray in the spirit. Please pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Overflow one, pray in the spirit. Shalabarokatosi and Amalakashi. Shaprakatu celebrate Yalama. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Overflow one, I want to minister to you now. Listen. Please, I want you to believe everything. I want to pray for you. Lift your hands, all of you. There are some of you here, as I'm looking, I'm just seeing chains. I want to pray at the count of three. I didn't come to waste your time. Right now, that chain is going to leave people now. Anyone here under the sound of my voice, and there is a chain of darkness overflow one, I declare at the count of three right now, let that chain be broken. One, two, three. I command that chain be broken now. Help them, please. Be broken now. To the back. Shakasko Pariata. Zato Zesekateriakata. Be broken, broken. Fire is coming. I'm seeing fire moving across the crowd. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break every force, every yoke of darkness. Hallelujah. Are you pregnant? Come. I'm seeing an evil spirit. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go. By the anointing of the spirit. I release the destiny of this baby. You will not lose this baby. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help her. This lady praying in tongues. In the name of Jesus Christ. The grace. For dreams and visions. The Lord is releasing it upon you pray for dreams and visions hallelujah now i'm going to walk across this crowd please i just want you to release your faith release your faith and receive something now as i walk through i'm seeing altars and they are living right now thank you jesus father let there be deliverance right now right now right now right now right now let that fire as i move oh god let the angel of your presence move let there be deliverance it is over that's what the lord says to you over now in the name of jesus christ over 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 shabbos katai sheketes kalabra katozi atakata over now in the name of jesus over by the anointing of the holy ghost it is over please believe as i'm passing you don't don't worry the anointing of god will locate you over now in the name of jesus christ let it be over now now over your life let it be over i'm seeing fire moving here like this who is that fire for in jesus name i stretch my hands let there be deliverance right now supernatural deliverance right now supernatural deliverance right now mama be free now in the name of jesus christ supernatural deliverance um i'm seeing a circle here and the lord is saying restoration of ministerial anointing a circle lord where are they there are people here at least four of you i stretch my hands let the anointing locate you the call for ministry the call for ministry the call Parakato Sedekatoshia. enter enter that level that's what i hear in the spirit enter enter that dimension enter that dimension enter that dimension enter that dimension in the name of jesus christ hallelujah who is is it victory or victoria i'm hearing a name like a victory or victoria who is that 
please very quickly want to pray for the sick now it's like you are wearing something like blue blue who is that person what's your name madam yes sir this is your first time here no sir you've been coming madam look at me god is going to change your story completely. amen i don't know you but yes. the lord is saying he's bringing breakthrough amen amen hold my hands look at me there is bad luck on your life my dear good things come but they never stay and the lord is saying to take it away right now be free in the name of jesus i take away that spirit from your life i set you free to move forward in the name of jesus in the name of jesus can we go in who's victoria again? all the victories of victoria be made free right now in jesus name can we go in from here Please, everyone open your mouth and begin to pray prophesy say in the name of jesus i'm breaking forth spiritually in the name of jesus christ it's a new level for me it's a new level for me enter a new dimension enter a new dimension now in the name of jesus lift your hands i'm passing here now there is an anointing move move to the next level i'm prophesying to everybody standing here within the vicinity of this anointing step into a new dimension i release that grace now i release that grace now i stretch my hands everything that has held you down let it leave you now in the name of jesus my god look at this are you seeing the legs are rotting completely in the name of jesus be free now i command be free now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ look at me my dear go home and write it good news comes for me in 12 days lord lose their destinies i'm standing here and I'm, there is an anointing let the destiny be open now open now in the name of jesus christ i'm standing here and i'm hearing i have called you accept my call accept my call accept my call accept my call my call is upon your life my call is upon your life stop fighting my call is upon your life that's what the spirit of god is saying my call is upon your life accept my call my call is upon your life my mandate is upon your life my mandate is upon your life that's what god is speaking my mandate is upon your life you cannot fight it it's an ordinance decided from heaven my mandate is upon your life light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle pastor lawrence speed come where is where is your wife to be come come two of you I see a grace for speed lift your hands enter that dimension now i release that grace speed to your life the lord is taking away delay go and mark it you are entering a strange level i see you climbing a ladder and the lord is saying it's time for your glory it's time for your glory light me lord light me lord light me lord collect that child quickly from kenny collect that child speed that grace collect that child in the name of jesus i'm seeing that grace a new dimension of speed coming upon your life a new level of speed coming upon your life a new level of speed hallelujah Ejimi, i'm seeing something for you i'm seeing please stand up i'm seeing a bottle of oil and i'm seeing dollars a bottle of oil and dollars these two dimensions the spirit and supernatural resources that grace the lord is multiplying it i'm seeing a bottle a bottle of oil 
a bottle of oil the lord is giving you a voice not only in the area of finances but a strange demonstration of the spirit please be patient we are going to pray for the sick but tonight i i perceive god is doing something strange young man come come you and this guy two of you come stand step into a new dimension new dimension in the name of jesus you will never be the same this guy just lift your hands where you are come enter a new level in the spirit i release that grace now upon you in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i'm looking at people and i'm seeing something rising from your stomach to your throat and the lord is saying is the spirit of prophecy lord i'm declaring right now it's happening to people right now it will come upon you like a mantle prophecy 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 from your belly from your belly prophecy i command those rivers makato sakata rivers of living water rivers 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 in the name of jesus christ this lady come you come quickly there is a grace the call of god is upon your life enter that dimension of his grace may the lord give you visitations 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 I bring you out of the cage that I see you in. I bring you out of the cage. I bring you out of the cage. I see you inside a cage. I bring you out of the cage. In the name of Jesus, by fire, I bring you out. I bring you out. Ancestry will not fight you. I bring you out of the cage. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are soon going to pray for the sick. Where's, where's your wife? Where is she? The Lord is saying the powers will fight no more. Come. The powers will fight no more. 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 There are ordinances fighting this family. I see it in the spirit. The powers will fight no more. In the name of Jesus, victory is established. The powers will fight no more. The powers will fight no more. The powers will fight no more. In the name of Jesus, I need to step into a new level of the prophetic that has always been there. In the name of Jesus Christ, this usher lady come in the name of Jesus Christ you will begin to see things before they happen that's what the Lord is saying I should tell you God is putting something in your eyes you will see things you will see things before they happen in the name of Jesus with precision with precision and with accuracy with precision with precision with precision and with accuracy where are these people that just married this lady welfare where is she now you and your wife where are they she's not around stand up let me pray for you on her behalf in the name of jesus christ i'm praying for your mother let the lord perfect her but i'm praying for you something wants to take finances off your life if i don't pray for you i see great suffering in the days coming it's like finance just dries up to the point that even your basic needs you cannot meet but i cancel it right now by the anointing of the holy spirit i cancel it right now in the name of jesus this fair lady an angel is pouring oil on your head that's what i'm seeing right now an angel is pouring oil on your head breakthrough step into a new dimension step into a new level in the name of jesus christ a new level a new level in the name of jesus christ wato where is she is she here
I'm seeing a flag being raised up. And the Lord is saying it's a new season. I'm seeing a flag being raised up in the spirit. The Lord is announcing you. I'm declaring, let that anointing come upon you. A new season. Let that flag be raised. In the name of Jesus, let that flag be raised. You will never, never be down. Let that flag be raised. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray for the sick. Let's just flow. God, you know, sometimes this is, this lady, you, come. Yes. Say for my shame. Say it for my shame. I receive double. The Lord is taking me to a new level and I receive it. I lay my hands upon you. In the name of Jesus, the grace for a new level is released upon you right now. I command it so. I declare it so. In Jesus' name I pray. This gentleman, you, come. Confusion ends now in your life. I lay my hands upon you. I command confusion to end right now from your life. In the name of Jesus, confusion ends now over your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, confusion ends over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing, I will, I will prophesy generally, but I'm seeing a family having the breakthrough of a new car. And an anointing, I'm, 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 it may not look like it's necessary for you, but I'm seeing an anointing locating that family now this is this is a, a blessing of a car you will stand and testify i don't care whether the resources are there or not i stretch my hands let that anointing make it happen in the name of jesus christ let that anointing by the spirit make it happen right now help that person please let that anointing make it happen right now in the name of jesus make it happen cameraman come I want to pray for you look at me it will surprise you the kind of favor you will start walking in Amen. you believe what i'm saying lift your hands father let this brother drink of the grace for favor a fresh dimension a fresh dimension a fresh dimension of favor in the name of jesus christ this lady you come the lord is saying i'm rolling away reproach from your life everything that looks like reproach i lay my hands upon you i'm literally feeling like there are holes on your head and the anointing is going through i command reproach go and never return from her life in the name of jesus christ now we're going to pray for the sick please we're going to be very fast we're going to be very fast listen to me if you have any cancer related issue or barrenness whether you are in overflow one two or three i will want to pray for you by myself otherwise overflow one um, um in the main auditorium i want you to come out over all the overflows just come to the front stand up stand up come to the front of your projector stands quickly please come to the front of your projector stands for god's sake not to embarrass you but look at this woman's leg look at this look at this doctor look at this is this sickness look at how the whole leg is rotting already please quickly you're sick in your body come quickly stand if the people cannot move just keep them where they are or bring them close so that you don't um are we together now we're going to pray it will be very fast because our time is gone we want to finish on time the devil is a wicked person for these kinds of oppression are we together there are so many people in overflow tree and uh, god will grant grace Pastor Lawrence, come. You will join them today. When our backs were against the wall, 
And it looked as if it was over You made a way Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, by the corporate anointing, we pray. These people have come expecting to be healed, expecting to be touched. I pray that your anointing will visit them right now. In the name of Jesus, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three. Let there be a release of the corporate grace. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, we're free now. In the name of Jesus Christ. What's wrong with you, my dear? Huh? Fracture. Where? How long? Where is the leg? It can't move. And your hand. Don't worry, it's okay. And your legs. Lord Jesus, please Walk help this lady. Miracle, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Walk my miracle here I release today. that anointing upon you right Walk now. My miracle, I correct your Jesus. body now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please stretch your hands here and begin to pray in the spirit. If they are still praying for you outside, just, just continue. Please, if your request is yet to come here, you can quickly wave it, wave it, and let the ushers have it and bring it here quickly. Stretch your hands. Stretch your hands. By faith, believing that God will visit you. Don't, don't stretch your hands out of unbelief. If there are requests here to come, please let them come here quickly. Please bring them quickly. Shabakato soprakato baladabash. Unto you that answers prayers, O God, shall all flesh come. Rakato sodo prendege barakato shabradiski labaria. Enda kato sata prakato jalabaria kato prendege degodos. Please pray. You are praying in the spirit. You are connecting. Lord, we are believing that we will not have to write this again. Be serious about it. Make sure you are connected by faith. Shakato kaparakato barikata sipriada balarabash. Shakata parakata paroto subriash. Lord, arise in majesty. Arise in your power. Visit the case of people. Change impossible situations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shata prakato barakato barikatekate. Shalekate prandakata barakatosh. Eketo kaparokata bariyadaba. Lord, let this be the last time they will write this. In the name of Jesus Christ, let this be the last time they will write this. In the name of Jesus, let this be the last time. Shabakata pakata 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 pakata. Endeketo rakato shada pragada baladaba. Lord, we believe in you. Arise, O God of heaven. Arise, O God of heaven. Arise, O God of heaven. Visit your people. Arise, O God of heaven. Visit your people. Shabakata parada baroto soto predegate legata kato prandegate presha de bele de bosh. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Please respond with a resounding amen in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, this is not a ritual. I stand on behalf of your people, Lord. These requests represent different dimensions of demonic jerichos standing between them and the place of destiny father as i step upon this let this be symbolic of the ark going around jericho yeah. hallelujah listen you're going to shout jesus we're going to shout jesus seven times are we together as a prophetic act over this i'm going to guide you and you will shout it for every one shout let it represent one day going around jericho that at the seventh time we are agreeing together that no matter what the issue is if you don't believe you will never never see the salvation of god but for believers you'll be surprised father that you hearken to this prophetic act i know god i stand leading your people as we shout that name the name of our high priest who has been exalted above the ironic priesthood above any kind of priesthood are you ready now i will call the number and you shout jesus are you ready number one number two Crumbling 
every mountain. Number three. Shabakoto Sopataya. Makrotoba. I tell you, I feel the fire of God as we're shouting this Jesus. Number four. Number five. Number six. I put an anointing on this seven shout. Let this be the shout that crumbles every mountain. In the name of Jesus. Number seven. I decree and declare unto you prepare for strange testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ some of you even before you get to your homes or where you came from you will meet it waiting for you like a messenger in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please lift your hands let's take the prophecy and then we'll Every shame and reproach that has lingered in your life shame and reproach some of you is a pattern across your family members in the name of Jesus Christ I command shame and reproach be rolled over your life forever be rolled over your life forever be rolled over your life forever hallelujah i release over your life supernatural grace for speed in life supernatural grace for speed in life supernatural grace for speed in life hallelujah i decree and declare that every garment he saw joshua the high priest and he said to remove that garment every garment you are wearing that is attracting bad luck attracting all kinds of things the bible says to give them a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness i tear off that garment from your life i tear off that garment from your life garment of reproach i tear it off from your life i tear it off from your life in the name of jesus christ I decree and declare divine direction Lord what do I do where do I go to tonight by dreams and visions and strange encounters I provoke divine direction to come to your direction in the name of Jesus Christ master we have toiled all night but I prophesy to you go back this time around to the same place you failed I anoint you go and succeed I anoint you go and succeed I anoint you go and surpass the ordinary in the name of Jesus Christ every door that has refused to open your parents tried it refused to open the Bible says lift up your heads oh ye gates and be ye lifted oh ye not doors ancient doors i come against every ancient door and every gate swing open now in the name of jesus swing open now in the name of jesus swing open now in the name of jesus every helper that must arise tonight not tomorrow tonight every helper ordained by God to rise up and come to your aid I provoke favor towards you from them I provoke favor towards you from them I provoke favor towards you from them listen whoever has what it takes to help you in the name of Jesus I direct their eyes to you I say it again whoever has what it takes to help you I direct their hearts to you
all I'm seeing in the spirit is light light falling on people that's all I'm seeing it's an illumination strong impartation of light that's what is happening all over the building God is opening the eyes of men giving explanations for some of you the light that is coming is direction strange direction by the spirit Some of you, this light that is coming is answered prayers. That's the answer to prayers. Coming as that light from the throne. Listen, let me tell you something. Many of us have robbed the Holy Spirit from finding expression. Some of these songs you see me coming, bringing from the Spirit. Many of us, God has been wanting to pass through you. But this rigidity we put, there is, there is a sense of religion. I am busy trying to make money, trying to read books, trying to be successful. We, our spirits are not malleable enough for the Holy Spirit to pass through us. The restraint is too much. That's why we don't get this sound. That's why our discernment is very low. Because we are busy. It takes, it takes staying in the present. Let me tell the truth. You will never touch certain frequencies in the spirit. When you are busy around trying to combine spirituality and many other things. The presence of God is a full time assignment. You must stay. Stay until the sound comes. Stay until the melodies come. Stay until the power comes. For when he comes, he comes with ease. For when he comes, he comes with illumination. Many of you have been praying, Oh Lord, take me to a new level. It's not just by prayer. Stay in the presence. Stay in the glory. That's the key. That's the secret. It's not just moving around. No, the glory doesn't just fall overnight. When you stay, your spirit man begins to acclimatize to the frequency of the spirit. That's how it works. It's not a hit and run thing. You just rush and come out. And then you want to hear with accuracy. Then you want his glory to flow. It doesn't work like that. There is, a, there is a staying. There is a staying. I tell you. It's a law. You must stay. The church has learned to hurry God. And we are hurrying the glory of God out of our lives. There are many of you here, listen. When you started out with God, you had the time and the staying power. But I don't know what it is that has happened. God is challenging us. That secret place is now a strange place for many of us. We are busy doing ministry. We are busy trying to make a living. We are busy trying to move around. The church has lost the art of the secret place. The secret place is not a place, it's a place where you stay like a waiter. Stay until his glory comes. And then when his glory comes, there is a signature upon your life. Undeniable. The secret place is the place of power. The secret place is the place where you have a message. If God does not sit upon you with his glory, you have no message. You can talk. It's not about Rema. 
it's about the presence that follows it you can preach all you can but there is a glory this is a testament of his visitation upon your life that's what creates impact that's what breaks chains i like you to pray and say lord show me your glory greater levels of your glory please pray expose me to that realm superior dimensions of your glory i have tasted of your glory i have seen what your grace can do but lord there is a desperation within my spirit to taste of something tangible Please sit down if you can for those who can sit there will be many impartations the spirit of prophecy is strong in this place night Some of you will never recover from tonight's meeting. I tell you, you will not even know what is happening to you. It's an encounter. Listen, listen. If you're a man of God in this place, I submit to you. You are wasting the time of God's people if you cannot convey the presence to that atmosphere. Yeah. That's how habits are broken. That's how chains are broken. That's how impartations happen. It's not just by laying on of hands. How many people can you lay your hands on? Let the glory come and there is transformation. Let the glory come and something is happening in people. Let the glory come and testimonies, sicknesses. Many of you are sitting down right now and sicknesses will just disappear. No, it can't stand the glory. Prayer lives have been revived different dimensions of the spirit that's why the place is called koinonia it's not a place of discussion it's an atmosphere of encounter Lord, let nothing restrain your hand in the midst of your people. Let nothing restrain your hand. Don't rob God from finding a vessel in you. Don't rob God from finding a truly anointed vessel in you. See, let me tell you something. If you follow these rubbish people are doing of just visiting God's presence to come and receive breakthrough and prosperity and power and rush back, you will never find God that way. Please believe me when I tell you this. God is not an object you use. You see that? There are some of us, our gifts are dormant for a very long time. Very long time. That press in the spirit to activate you listen it's an anomaly when you remain in the same spiritual level for a very long time something is wrong and when you are rising it's obvious everybody knows that there is a transition some of us are in the same position for a very long time because we are giving god barely enough see that there are some of us our dreams have ceased our visions have ceased. Our encounters have ceased. 
our passion for his glory has ceased listen every time the experience you used to have with god ceases something stopped it it never stops by default are we together now there are many of us you used to see things before they happen right now it has dried up out of nothing because you are trying to look for a wife or look for a husband Hallelujah. Dry up. There's nothing there again. No power. No grace. All these things we keep making noise around it in church. One person falls down. One person falls down and we jump around. That's nonsense. There are higher dimensions. There are superior levels in the spirit. Beyond calling names and phone numbers. There is the spirit, not the gift of prophecy. There is the very spirit of it. The very operation of the prophetic realm. Where people receive testimonies of Jesus without you speaking any message. The spirit of prophecy. Men live with encounters they cannot explain. No matter how hardened you are, when you come into this atmosphere, something must surrender. That's what happens when his presence comes. You cannot change men by the excellency of persuasions. No. It doesn't work that way. The presence. That's what brings transformation. The presence. That's what brings change. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's only a price that very few desire to pay. Because we like things cheap. We like things easy anything that commits us we do not want we want results but we hate process oh we want to be mightily used you want to stand and see the glory of god move around brother there is a price it's not a gift it's a reward it's a reward for diligence it's a reward for surrender it's a reward for total yieldedness i used to hear benny Hinn say it total yieldedness that's the price for the anointing. Total yieldedness. Not half-hearted yieldedness. How many musicians are here? You have not brought one song from the Spirit. It's, it's, a, it's an indictment on your call. It's an indictment of, on your gift. There are melodies in the Spirit like waves. But there is a frequency with which your spirit must rise to. And then you will capture this thing. The, the level of the sophistication of your spirit is the level to which you will capture. Many of us, our prayer lives have died, gone cold, gone cold, gone cold. You only pray until you feel tired. See, let me tell you why many of us, our prayer lives are not effective. We are only praying to justify prayer. You don't pray for the purpose of touching realities in the spirit. You see that? Yes. You're at, you can pray and then after one hour or two hours, you can say, I have tried. That's a different, you are only praying to be better than somebody else. But there is a way you come with a desperation. And you pray that your spirit will make contact. If that contact happens in 10 minutes, you end. If that contact happens in 5 hours, you continue. See, it's not about religion. But it starts with a desperation a desperation a desire the first message the lord is communicating tonight is let there be a revival in your spirit man get back those mantles and those gifts wherever you threw them let those dreams come alive again because in those dreams are the puzzles of your destiny a little here a little there before the year runs out, we are going to take a teaching on angels and the ministry of angels. You see, many of us have lost touch with spiritual reality. It's dangerous in this time and age to just move sensually. That the limit of your perception is a three-dimensional realm. You will be a victim of too many things. You've got to access a frequency that is higher than the material realm. To supply you the strength and the illumination. Hallelujah. I challenge everyone here. There is more that God can do with your life. If you will give him space. 
God is not a boyfriend. He's not a girlfriend. He's not looking for an affair. He wants a relationship. A very serious one. You give God an affair, you will get nothing out of it. If God is one of the many important things in your life, believe me, you will never find him. Believe me, you will never find him. Listen, listen. This desire is not for men of God. This desire is for everyone who wants God. Don't you think that this bias is for pastors? No, no. The spirit of man was designed to only find satisfaction in his presence. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Oh, Jesus, you're the cup that pulls you on dry. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that pulls you on dry. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven. Sing it just one more time. Your presence, Your presence is heaven, is heaven to, me. to me. Your presence is heaven to Your me. Welcome everyone. This is Koinonia. God bless you especially for our visitors and many who are coming for the first time. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now today our meeting will be very different. We are going to take, I'll respond to a few questions and answers. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit put it in my heart. There are so many of us that have questions about the Holy Spirit, about encounters spiritual growth will give us an opportunity maybe 30 minutes and then i'll just minister to people there are people who need to be ministered to and so that's what we're going to do help us with another mic please um now i know that please listen many of us have questions especially as regards intimacy encounters our spiritual lives i'm trusting that god will grant grace we we'll use all the questions as a message and just communicate it. And please, I want you to feel free. Make sure that you ask questions that are applicable to our spiritual growth, not just something that is a bias. For some of us, it's something regards prayer, your prayer life, um, your word life. If there's no mic, you can, I can take one and then you can use this. Hallelujah. So, um, because... It's not only important to teach. There are some of us who have encountered certain challenges, maybe in the dispensing of the gift of the Spirit in our lives or anything that has to do with the Holy Spirit and intimacy and our spiritual growth. And I'm trusting that God will grant us um, a few minutes. That's deliverance happening to her. Something is leaving her. That devil of darkness. Leave her right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's one other lady with this same situation. Right now in this place. The power of God is coming upon her. This is a spirit that has been tormenting her. Lord, wherever that lady is right now. I declare deliverance. By the power of the Holy Spirit. That lady is in the congregation here. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's like fire that will come upon you. I judge that spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, I decree judgment. I pass 
a note of judgment to that wicked spirit that is bringing oppression. Praise the Lord. So, we are going to have a little Q&A and I will respond. And maybe uh, on one or two occasions, we can allow one or two people to respond. The questions will bless many of us because it will answer, it will attempt to answer or solve some of the puzzles that are around our lives. I don't want our spiritual lives to be um, without accuracy. Some of us may have been making the same mistake for a long time. That's why we are not getting certain results spiritually. Hallelujah. Some of us may be pressing into God. For instance, there are people who press into God, but necessarily they find out that they are always backsliding. Not that they are sleeping around or doing anything immoral. But that staying power is like there is a spiritual meter. Every time you get to a dimension, it pulls you back. You are making progress, but the graph is not straight. It's like it goes up, forces you down. Then you have to pray and fast your way. There are many of us who do not know how to command strength in the spirit. Like a gentleman who... Uh, I think someone sent me a text. I don't know if he's here. He sent me a text in the afternoon. Um, and he said every time he's in the presence of God or anytime he's talking to people about the glory of God, he starts yawning mysteriously, like yawning. And um, some of you are already nodding in agreement. It's happening to me too. What is the meaning of that? <laughs> are you yawning out demons? Are you absorbing the glory? What exactly is happening? So um, please be smart. Don't be rude to the protocol people. Just walk as they direct you. We're going to have a few questions. Um, I will use the questions. Some of the questions will actually culminate to teachings. And I'll use the opportunity and just address things. Don't be biased. Make sure that you ask things that are relevant. If your question is not relevant to our meeting, we'll ignore it. Is that all right? Let's pray in one minute and say, Father, speak to me. Go ahead and pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, so um, we'll come in threes. We'll just have the first three. They will stand. And then if there's any need. So let me see by wave of hands. I'll point people out. Okay, number one, you can stand up, come. Second, number two. And then um, let's have a lady figure. All right, that lady waving her hands in blue. Come quickly. Appreciate them as they come. Be smart. Tell us your name straight to the point if you're wasting our time please we'll, we'll send you to your seat let me tell you in advance so you are not embarrassed go ahead turn to the congregation god bless you go ahead okay good evening sir is it working yes sir um good evening sir thank you yes, bless sir. you yes sir my question is um about visions visions yes sir what, what are they visions okay yes sir what are they and are visions a sign of spiritual growth okay. that's um like spiritual visions are they limited to a particular set of people people who do not have them as frequently as are they growing? yes are they is it a sign that they are growing okay i, I want to visions are a dimension of supernatural encounters right um there are many levels dimensions and types of supernatural encounters Visions are just um, a dimension of supernatural encounters that affords a person an opportunity to access realities in the spirit. It could be realities that reveal the past, the present, or the future. You understand? It could also be realities that expose that person to um, spiritual happenings. Now, the whole goal of visions, and, and I want us to pay attention, the whole goal of visions and encounters, any supernatural encounter is prophetic in its dimension. Are we together now? So every time we talk of prophecy, it's not just speaking. Any encounter that exposes you to access any realm beyond the physical is a prophetic dimension. So in every man, there is a prophetic dimension. Let me call it a latent prophetic dimension. Now, those who are called into the prophetic or apostolic office, the advantage of the apostolic office is that on the strength of that office, you can 
walk, you should walk in all the fivefold offices because it's an administrative office. It heads and coordinates the spiritual activities. Are we together now? But in a typical prophetic office, by default, the moment you there is an election of grace upon you, inclined towards that prophetic office, there are it's like spiritual configurations by default. Are we together now? Now, your spiritual life and your spiritual growth can add to it. But anybody called into the prophetic office or any dimension of prophetic operations, by default, can be open to the realm of the spirit. That's why you can find people seeing visions who are not born again. Are we together now? Remember, he told Jeremiah the prophet, he said, while you were in your mother's womb, I had already called you and ordained you to be a prophet. Are we clear now? So visions and generally all supernatural encounters are a dimension of the prophetic. And the goal of visions, dreams, is illumination and direction. Sometimes also impartation. It gives you illumination, access to light and information, right? Sometimes it gives you direction. But in many cases, it also comes with impartation. That's why some of us can have dreams, have visions, encounters. We don't exactly know why they came, but they leave residues of impartations. As we get up and begin our normal life, we see that certain possibilities in the spirit has been activated. And we may not know at what point it was activated. Like wisdom, like certain virtues. Do you understand? So, now, but that does not mean, listen... If you are truly growing spiritually, right? Even if you are not called into the prophetic dimension or prophetic realm. If you are growing spiritually, the, the presence of God has a prophetic effect on everyone. Whether you are a prophet or not. This is the reason why somebody on the strength of sheer intimacy with the Holy Spirit can access a level that will make him look like a prophet. But in reality, he's not a prophet. He's just one who has pressed into God to an appreciable dimension. It's like an aura of God's presence. Now, the Bible does not use visions and dreams to qualify spiritual growth. Although experience has shown us that as you progress spiritually, you will begin to um, get impulses. It's called spiritual perception. In fact, I preached a message on that. You can get it with the media after the service. Are we, are we understanding now? Because there are some of us here who are praying, we love God, but aside from dreams and maybe what we call intuition, what people like Kenneth Hagin will call the knowing of the spirit, we've not had any supernatural encounter as it were. And sometimes we get intimidated. And I think I must correct that. Because some of us get intimidated because someone is now talking and saying... Um, um, Ogashewu saw something and he's prophesying and he's saying oh I saw something and you you are standing frustrated that you do not have visionary encounters in terms of um, encounters you are awake you are alive and you are caught up or a picture comes before you or the audible voice of God or some kind of supernatural encounters it does not mean you are not growing spiritually are we together now there are two spiritual indices to measure spiritual growth Number one is your degree of conformity into the image of the Christ. That's the first biblical sign of spiritual growth. So if you are born again and there is no transformation in you, you are not conforming to the image of Christ, believe me, your salvation is questionable. In fact, let me, let me press on this before we continue. There are many people who think they are born again. And, and please, I don't want you to doubt your salvation, but I must be sincere with you. There are many people who think they are born again. And I tell you the truth by the Lord, they are not. They are not saved. The meaning of that is if they die today, they are going to hell. Are we together now? Please, don't, don't trivialize salvation. Salvation is the, is the supplanting of the very life of God in a mortal man. Are we together? The Bible says you are born of the incorruptible seed. Remember? Of the word of God. So there is a seed. The same way a man plants a seed in his wife, what do you expect that seed to do? There should be fertilization. Is that true? And eventually, as time progresses, that seed, right, begins to produce. So you cannot tell me you are born again. Listen, 
that you are born again the life of christ is in you and you are exposed to the atmosphere of the spirit and progressively we do not see after a prolonged period of time evidences of conformity to the image of christ something is wrong with that salvation are we together now so it's very very important so that's one index the second index is your degree of comprehension the degree to which you are having understanding on the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom so that your degree of conformity to what degree do i see christ in you in fact paul puts it this way he said my little children of whom i travail until christ be formed in you he was talking to people who were already saved so conformity to the image of christ and access to the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom these two will naturally produce empowerment impartation access to the anointing are we together now so that's it about vision god bless you yes sir i appreciate you sir sir i want to know uh, what's your name my name is oko sampotens okay yes when um you there is a signal that an attack is coming on your spiritual life and you you pray against it but then actually you are going down spiritually sorry again you're going down spiritually your spiritual life you are going down spiritually yeah kind of you have an attack is coming on your spiritual life and then you attack from hell construct your question pray, very logical so that pray, you prayer pray life for instance is going down life is going down yes and then you you pray you pray against it then a time comes that what the very incidents that causes you to go down finally happens although you prayed against it and it, it happens to um you you feel that okay you failed and then the spirit comes to um encourage you that as if it's it, it is it was proposed by god okay so what is the question so now? my question now is uh, when are, are those attacks actually and after the attack you grow higher are those attacks actually um ingredients to for you to grow spiritually to live you the level it, you are you mean a demonic attack uh, on your spiritual life for instance okay um his, his question has many sides to it i'm not getting exactly what he's asking but if i understand you well you mean your prayer life is going down yes are we together yes and then what happens there is a there, there is even a, there is a knowing in you that there, there that, is an attack yes a demonic attack on yes, your life yes okay and then for instance there is a, maybe a habit god has delivered you from and then there is a knowing that um it's coming back or something the devil wants to bring and it you back. pray and you pray against it let it not be let it not be and lord then it still happens. and then it happens okay. then you feel like it's man it's gone then there is an encouragement that as if this thing is proposed and then after that you feel a lifting higher okay i think i get what you're saying no 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 it's not a habit is not proposed to lift you up spiritually what you see is an interplay of your carelessness and the mercy of god and the grace of god there are many things interwoven so you don't justify that because you grew from it it meant god brought it now we must understand that there are different attributes of god that um it is part of the love of god now love in the spirit is not affection love in the spirit is a realm with many dimensions there is a dimension of love called discipline there is a dimension of love called judgment there is a dimension of love called mercy there is a dimension of love called justice are we together that's why paul says to know the length the breadth and he he gives love a dimension so when we say the love of god comes to you it can come as his goodness it has, can come as his chastisement are we together it can come as his mercy now you are a believer number one we have to examine what made your prayer life to go down right there are two reasons why your prayer life can go down number one it can be the natural fatigue that comes from the spirit and the flesh contending together according to galatians chapter 5 verse 16 it says this i say then walk ye in the spirit and you shall not gratify the desires of the flesh right so it says the flesh lusted after the spirit the spirit after the flesh and there is a contention you get up in the morning i mean there are ladies to resist there is beer to cast away there, there are all kinds of things to happen there is bribery and corruption to run away from at the end of it after a while it's like it's like wear and tear your spirit can be fatigued that's not backsliding that's simply a tiring 
because of your faculties that help you interact with the spirit at that point the solution is a retreat isaiah 40 verse 31 even the young men can be weary they can faint all right then but they that wait upon the lord but in a situation where it is an attack which often happens there are three seasons where satan attacks people number one at the birthing of something new the moment there is something new about to happen in your life part of the many events that happen is a strange attack that has nothing to do with your spiritual life you read the bible and you find out it's not unusual right very very important there is always a strange attack revelations i saw a mystery a woman who was carrying a man child about to give birth to that child and a dragon came and stood waiting for the child to come so that she will eat now satan tries to stop you at the time of sowing your seeds any kind of seed spiritual seed if he cannot stop it he will try to stop the gestation period by bringing impatience taking advantage of your human nature that hope deferred makes the heart weary are we together now and if you cannot stop it then he will wait for you at the point of harvest so that he will abort the harvest these are the three seasons and stages of satan's attack so before you start ministry look at that he did it to moses stage one when moses was about to be birthed and conceived they wanted to kill all the people so to abort the destiny from day one now that it did not happen he wanted to implicate moses and he caused moses to kill somebody so that it will affect him the process and then eventually towards the end of his life he used anger and stopped him from entering so there are three stages of satan's attack are we together we see that even in the life of jesus jesus about to be born his star shines in the east wise men follow him herod wants to kill him are we together then later on again we see that through the process after his baptism satan comes to wait for him and then he tries to jeopardize his destiny by telling him i'll give you the kingdom bow down and since he refused and then he tried and tried and tried all through the lifetime of jesus satan could not get him and then the last stage was in hell when jesus was preparing to defeat all the cohorts of hell and come out all the demons and the principalities were on him to force him to bow and then he rose up and you know that when jesus was about to resurrect what happened they paid some people to lie even when he resurrected he, they guarded the place and when he resurrected they paid some people they said go and lie that the disciples came and stole his body so we see that there are seasons you can actually discern seasons where you know you are liable to attacks except you do not have spiritual intelligence now satan i'm using this are, are we getting blessed is god speaking to us satan is not omniscient there are three attributes that make god sovereign number one is his omnipresence his ability to be everywhere satan is not everywhere job 1 verse 1 from whence comest thou later on you read from running to and fro god doesn't run to and fro his eyes can see everything the all-seeing eyes of god are we together now number two his omniscience his ability to know all things satan does not know all things he works with informations that's why he uses human agents to probe into people that's why satan pursued prophets because he wanted to hear what god was telling them are we together now very important and then number three his omnipotence his ability to have all power once have i spoken twice have we heard that all power belongs to the lord now satan does not have these attributes are we together so satan can discern seasons of breakthrough in your life and that season is usually communicated in the spirit by unusual angelic activities satan was once a cherub and so he understands remember when jacob slept right when you read genesis 28 when jacob slept he saw a ladder there were unusual activities happening are we together now the same thing jesus told nathaniel in john chapter 1 he said you will see many things you see the heavens open and all of that so what happens is that at a point where the devil sees that there are unusual activities or prophecy has revealed what god is about to do that's why when prophecy comes that's not the time to cross your leg 
Paul spoke to his son Timothy. He said, this charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare with the prophecies. Because prophecy is an announcement. It's an unveiling. The moment the voice of God prophetically spoke, John said, behold the lamb. And a voice said, this is my beloved son. Satan started chasing him. Are we together now? So when there is an attack, it usually is that God is, is trying to do something in your life and Satan is trying to raise a counter-attack. At that point, if you understand the mysteries of the kingdom, there is a secret to tap into a higher supply of grace. Are you following me now? And that's the power of a retreat. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. They that wait. The moment you sense that there is a lot of boisterous activities in your life, and you will know it by the intuition of the spirit. Some of you will see it in dreams. Some of you will have it in visions. Some of you prophecies will come to you. And many of us who are used to rejecting prophecy. Now, prophecy must not be exalted above the word of God. However, it's important to many times pay attention to it. Especially when it's coming from vessels that know God and are credible. It's important to pay attention. Praise the Lord. Very, very important. So, when there is an attack and it is a demonic attack, if it prevails over you, an attack is inevitable on the saints and it's not a surprising thing. The surprise, however, is when Satan prevails. Are we together now? Because even in heaven there was war. The Bible said there was war in heaven. That, that dragon, Lucifer, he rose and archangel, Michael, also rose. But Satan prevailed not. There was no place found for him and he was casted to the earth. And there was a lamentation. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. You know, Satan, that old serpent, he has come with anger and great fury. Are we together now? So if there is an attack, an affliction, the secret is prayer. And it's in a secret place. So if your prayer life died, it's because you did not build momentum before that time. Are we together? That's the reason why it is important for every believer to have what we call, it's like a spiritual bank. It's like an energy bank. So your daily prayer, the Bible says redeeming the time. That's the mystery. There are two words that are used time in the Greek. There is chronos and there is kairos. Chronos is the passage of time. Kairos is an opportune time or a set time. The Bible uses these two words in the book of Psalms. It said, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time, chronos, to favor her. Yea, the kairos, when you translate it to Hebrew, the set time. Are we together now? So, there is a set time, an opportune time, where major things happen between heaven. There is serious business between you and heaven. And at that time, the devil knows and he will launch attacks. So what you do is you build a spiritual fortification, both spiritual intelligence and capacity in the place of prayer, so that at such time, it will sustain you. The Bible says, if you turn aside in the day of battle, what was wrong? Your strength, your spiritual strength now is small. So if you fell in that attack, it's because your strength was small. Are we together? Let's assume, let's use something, maybe pornography. Are we together now? And it's something God had delivered you from. And you sense that the devil is trying to drive you again into porn, uh, pornography. Are we together now? And then you fell to it. That falling is not a test. That falling is not the furnace of affliction we are talking about. That you fell simply because your spirit did not sustain the strength and the energy to scale through. But then in the midst of it, the dimension of God's love called mercy comes in so don't confuse it that because you learn more from that situation it means it was god that orchestrated it god simply took advantage of it and allowed his mercy to prevail so that in your rising you will now rise better stronger and more anointed this is what makes god love are you getting it now but that does not mean god intended for you to necessarily fall the falling is simply the limitation of your spirit man I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yes. Sorry, uh, this is there are a, many people. If yeah. you ask two two questions, please. If you come out after two questions, you go and sit down and hope that somebody will ask your question. Are we together? Yeah. Um, this has been happening. I will see some things. I won't. I will not know how to inquire 
for the meaning. And when it happens later, sometimes they are not good. At times, it posi- it's positive. You will what? Sorry. See, for instance. You will see things, yeah, yeah. visions now. Yes. Now, like, there was a time I saw myself traveling with a lady. And when it came, I didn't understand what it meant. When it came. You were traveling to, with a lady uh, to, a, a vision. To, to a place, yes. When it to came where? to a place, I didn't know we were going okay, to a place. Okay, no so location. The, okay. the reality was that the person was under attack and I was the one to lead her to the prayer place. I'm, uh, in Niger- and that, that oh, was you held her and you were taking her yeah. to a place. Okay. That's where she got her. This thing, but I didn't understand the meaning then. Now, recently, I saw a, a lady, my cosmate, um, pick a bag and was traveling. I didn't know what it meant. The next day, uh, she actually told me she was, tra- she was traveling to a place. I said, what for? She said, somebody just died there. Now, I understood that uh, maybe if we, were, if we had prayed, about the journey and all of that, if it was a bad one. So, how does one, my question is, how would one be, uh, how would one know the meaning of the pictures you are seeing at the time of the vision to help your direction in prayers? Okay, God bless you. Now, there are two things here that our attempt to respond to. I, I don't know if we understand his question, but um, after this, we'll take three people from outside before we continue. So, protocol help us. We'll get the three people from outside who have questions. Please, you see how time is going. If you come and you ask a question that doesn't make sense, we have agreed as a congregation that we are sending you back. Please, we intend to grow and we want to redeem the time. Are we together? So please, before you come, make sure you are prepared not to disgrace yourself. Are we together? Ask questions. Seek counsel with your neighbor whether your question is constructive enough. Yes, yes, please. Please, so that you don't, you don't come out here and, and waste our time. But the gentleman was saying something that I consider to be important. Now, I think the biggest error in the prophetic is lack of spiritual growth to contend for accurate interpretation. The problem with the prophetic or visionary encounters usually, three of us can see the same thing in the spirit, but it does not mean the same for all three of us. Are we together? Now, that's the problem I have with books that say, if you see a chain, it means oppression. What if it's a chain watch? that I saw what if it's a, a necklace to mean an ornament of royalty you can't just say I saw a chain it means I'm under attack I, I remember a lady years ago who was pressing into God and when she got to that dimension she she a, another lady had a dream about her and saw her naked and came and met her and started lambasting her and say you are walking in immorality what kind of nonsense life is this you are giving us an impression like you are serious with god now your secret has been revealed and the lady was depressed and she came and met me that that nakedness was a message in the spirit that she was becoming intimate with the spirit but it was wrongly interpreted three of us can see a finger in the spirit for one, it means warning. Stop what you are doing. For another man, one, it means direction. Come up here. Are we together? For another, it means I am blessing the works of your hands. We all saw the same thing. So it is wrong. Remember in the interpretation of the dream of, of, of Joseph and the wine presser and baker, all of them saw three, three things. Three baskets, three this. He interpreted for the first one and he was happy. Then the other one said, me too, I have my own. He said, in three days, they will hang you. And this is established. And they hung him after three days. Are we together? So, stop going around with predefined prophetic interpretations. You only make certain prophetic interpretations predefined if the character of their operation has been established in the world. For instance, anywhere you see a dove is a representation of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Anywhere. It's a spiritual symbol that the Spirit of God has associated himself with. Except if you see a dove and you see it oscillating, that's, a, that's deception, for instance. Because according to the scriptures, the enemy can parade himself as an angel of light. Are we together now? So, it is true that there are certain default symbols that help us communicate with visionary encounters. But not just that you see... You can see a woman in the spirit. You can see yourself moving with a woman. And you may think that God is punishing you from lo- or lost. A woman in the spirit is a gate. That woman you are seeing could be that you are entering a new season. Are you seeing now? But because you do not sustain that spiritual intelligence, 
you go around casting something you should be prophesying to come and, and all of that so i think um for the gentleman i think i've been able to help him i i hope that i got his question correctly if i didn't i'm, I'm so sorry praise god yes my praise dear. god permit me to say this that first that is an honor to finally meeting you after listening to your message for a very long time god bless you thank you <laughs> thank you i <laughs> I'm very Thank happy you. I'm here tonight. You're My welcome. question is to Baruch Itku. The first question is, what do you do as a person when you're struggling with spiritual growth? Today you are up, tomorrow spiritual you are Spiritual growth. Uh, does what? it mean that um, it's like a graph that you'll be going zigzag, zigzag till you get to that final slope? Uh, or okay. is it that you question just stop? Two. The second question is, you're talking about dream and vision. In my lodge, we had a case where someone said he had a dream, blah, 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 blah. And it really caused a big advocate in my lodge. Look at the congregation. Okay. It's, it really caused a big advocate in my lodge. I'm asking the question that does he had a dream about the lodge or something? About the sister that the sister came to seduce him, blah, blah, blah. And everybody was now calling the sister a witch. That has, does it mean that all dreams come from God? Okay. When we see dreams, does it mean that everything is, we see, it is coming from God? Okay. Thank you very much. God bless you, my dear. Um, her first question was sometimes they should not go immediately so that they can remind me in case I've lost um, I'm interpreting them with my spirit so my mind is hardly here um, her first question was what up up and down okay okay listen 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 please what does the bible say the path of the just is like a shining light that does what shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day now there is a difference between spiritual fatigue and backsliding i think i've, I've cleared i've cleared that all right for as long as you are wearing this body the limitations of carrying up mortality right the concept of immortality is a concept that is accessible but immortality is not an impartation immortality is the resultant effect of accessing light from the spirit because the bible says as we behold him we are changed now the problem usually is that our lifetime and our level of regeneration is so slow that our lifetime will not be able to help us change that fast that's why we die are we together now but it is possible that a man can contend for that dimension enoch did it elijah did it so we know that it's possible to live bodily although in a glorified form out of this earth moses didn't do it um and all of that but at least we have two witnesses two evidences in the bible that they were able to access that so when you find yourself see and, and this is her question is very instrumental to your spiritual health if you are sick and you don't know how many of you have seen people in the village who are sick they don't even know to them they are healthy you just test them and say mr man you have malaria plus plus and yet the person is playing football you not now tell the person go to the hospital that's how many people are spiritually and for me your spiritual life is tested based on your passion for god there are certain things that start happening in your life that you know there is danger number one your prayer life your when your prayer life is is nose diving don't ever pretend that is a dimension of growth you are backsliding immediately once your prayer life is going down don't let satan fool you and say you are just in a season where uh, god doesn't want you to say anything or this and that and that be very careful because it could be deception to destroy you your spiritual life number two your passion for the word number three your passion for the house of god number four i want to call it your your sense of morality is important if all of a sudden i sit down and I find out that I start lusting after you. Call me apostle, call me whatever. I'm lusting after you. I came for Koinonia, I saw you. Abel is preaching, Cain is there, disturbing his mind. What do you think I'll do? It will be stupid for me to wear suit again and come back. I'll use the week to flog out that element of the flesh that is growing. Many of us ignore those promptings until it grows to a point where it backfires, obviously. That's when we start crashing in. The moment, see, the Bible says, let sin have no place. Don't give the devil a foothold. The moment you find out that there is a place, there, is, there are certain things you are bending on your values. You don't pray for three days or four days. 
you feel all right very very all right you carry your bible and there is no zeal to read sometimes it could be in the presence of god you'll be able to find out whether it's spiritual fatigue or it is backsliding are we together but ultimately the difference between spiritual fatigue and backsliding is that under spiritual fatigue your passion is still there it's just the zeal and the strength to press through that is not there but under backsliding your zeal and your passion dies are, are we together now for the our brother that saw a vision that a lady is seducing him um that's that's wrong you see this, this is the problem we have when we live in christian communities because people wake up with all kinds of things i spoke to you about interpretation this brother may be a sincere person maybe he's here we are not creating fight are, you, are we together you don't know whether he followed you or koinonia you said he's in your lodge now the point is this it is wrong you see prophecy and in the realm of and the realm of the spirit also depends on your mental renewal for correct interpretation are we together i can guarantee you that this brother's spiritual paradigm fundamentally is faulty for him to see an innocent lady and call her a witch to say is he the only person in the lodge you'll be surprised it's not even maybe the most handsome or something so um it's, it's a wrong paradigm now you point do you know another thing it is possible that i can go to bed and see shall homer chasing me maybe with a stick in a dream are we together now and all of a sudden i wake up and i say i saw shall homer chasing me and his welfare that cooks for me i put two and two together and i say my life is under i'm in danger i mean and then i now dissolve koinonia welfare because they are trying to destroy apostle joshua selman some of you you have that paradigm now it can happen a possibility exists that such kinds of things happen i mean in the house of god there are all kinds of things but then i'm saying that your interpretation primarily should not be that because he saw a lady if he does not understand seek counsel there are there are spiritual puzzles that we put together you must let scripture interpret your encounters are we together now i mean in the bible women seduce men what was the progression of the seduction samson was seduced are we together who again was seduced in the bible huh job was not seduced who? joseph was seduced you some of you are saying job look at how your poor but please how about this is koinonia don't we're bible people how, job was never seduced the only woman with him was his wife please don't go and say that anywhere it's very bad are, are we together now my dear so that 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 teaching even if it was true this is what i would have done if i had a dream and you pursue me or you are trying to sleep with me or something in a dream right even if it was your face it's wrong to get up and call you a witch do you know because you don't know what spiritual challenges she's facing you now get up and you now call her a witch three situations would help to interpret that number one it could be that there is a spiritual operation around your life and your family that births seduction it can be true are we together that you as a person you are not bad but it's possible that you are being influenced by the spirit of lust or because of the background you are coming from and so it will happen in the similitude of your face disturbing that person are we together now and so you will feel bad number two it can be the spirit of confusion the devil masquerading to now cause confusion are we together so he will now use your face just like you saw your father quarreling you you saw your mother beating you you just got up and said your mother is a witch anybody whether my father my mother the, the woman is innocent you find out that we keep calling people witches and wizards who have no business with witchcraft however 80 percent of them are being influenced by spirits that operate in the character of what they were accused of you see that so um whoever he called a witch i can guarantee you is not a witch please she left her father's house to also come and do nyc she's not a witch she may not be spiritually strong and all of that but she's not a witch it may be wrong so go and comfort her the brother what he saw 
when you have encounters you are not guaranteed to have interpretation for them but one thing you can do is blast in tongues sufficiently until your spirit man gives you a note of peace at that point you know that whatever is the issue whether calling it forth or driving it away it has been settled it is for that cause the spirit of god makes intercession for us I cannot tell you that every encounter I've had, I've had interpretation for it. In fact, some of them may be years in the future. As I grow spiritually, or I have other encounters that piece them up together, I now see the message. But in the interim, every time you wake up from an encounter, praying in the spirit is the way forward. And you pray until there is that check in your spirit that whatever it is, it's been settled. You understand? So that's what you should do. God bless you and increase you. Eh? Okay, straight to the point. Um, we have, okay, let's have one or two more people. Two more people. Please, if you are sure your question is really going to bless us, we have a little time and do, please, and please don't ask anything here that will waste our time. Are we together? The gentleman, uh, if your questions will be fast, I can listen to it and combine it. That gentleman, there's a lady in the background. You, sister, the one waving your hands, come. Um, have we had anybody outside? Okay, there's one person outside. Okay, one usher, come. You're a worker, we love you, come. Okay, so quickly. Good evening, sir. How are you? a process whereby... Don't look at me. As you're saying it, look at the congregation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. In a process whereby someone is suffering from the lust of the flesh... Lost of the flesh. Yes. Example, what is loss of the flesh? For Immorality. example, masturbation. Okay. Or lesbianism. And you are praying. Praying in tongues. Pray. You are in the presence of prayers. And you are still having the feelings. In the presence of praying, you, know, you are still struggling and struggling. You are trying to pray. The spirit is just trying and trying. So, sir, what do you What's do? the way forward? God bless you. Thank you. He's been very sincere. Look, let me tell you the truth. The goal of this question and answer session is to help us grow spiritually. There's nothing embarrassing about it. Praise God. There are people like that. In fact, I've seen people who are suffering from immorality or lust and they're on three days dry. On the third day, before they break with food, are we together now? The devil does some kind of things, positions, the same lady they used to sleep with and it happens again or internet pornography or whatever. We've seen these kinds of cases. So, um, do you know what deliverance is? Deliverance is not just coughing out things and rolling around and pushing chairs and bringing people here. Deliverance is the spiritual mechanism with which a man is separated from a spirit or an influence over his life. Are we together now? There are three dimensions or three levels that access Satan in a man's life. Number one is called covenants. Covenants. It is usually the strongest of the three. Number two is disobedience. Or ignorance. Number two is ignorance. Then number three is disobedience. Now, the danger of covenant and ties is that your personal salvation does not take away the covenant that is in a territory. Are we together now? That is the reason why someone can be born again. There are still corrupt people in Nigeria. But are you corrupt? No. Are we together now? Nigeria is termed a corrupt nation. Yet there are righteous people who are true. Are we together now? The earth is the Lord. Yet they are still bombing children and disturbing people. So there are covenants. A covenant is a legal agreement between spirit entities and human beings or fellow human beings. Right? That either opens up access for good or of evil. Covenants have consequences, right? They can, they can, they can transcend generations. So this is very important. That's why you find out that the classic sign of covenants is that there must be a pattern to it. The moment there is a covenant involved in any process, there is a pattern. If these three guys are brothers, and you find out that Michael is very rich kenny is very rich promise is very rich you see that pattern there is a covenant that grant that access promise very poor kenny very poor michael struggling there is also a pattern so patterns are usually communications that the access point for the realm of the spirit in that situation is a covenant 
So you find out that a father is an armed robber. When he stole, his son did not know. Many years later, the son will also come and steal. Have you seen people like that? The same pattern that happened to their parents repeats themselves. Because the patterns are a spiritual formula. There is an enchantment like a spell that makes it happen. I know a lady who, who I, I, I think um, um, she got pregnant and the person who got her pregnant, I think was a man of God. Same thing happened to her mother. Same thing happened to her grandmother. One reverend in their village got the grandmother pregnant. Many years later, one, one evangelist or something got the mother pregnant. And then now, one brother in a fellowship gets the lady pregnant. Now, that brother does not know the reverend that got uh, uh, um, grandma pregnant that time when she was young. But then, the truth remains that there is a pattern. Are, are we together? Are you getting it now? And I know that sometimes many of us are preached into believing they don't exist. And we try to explain them away. But the truth is, it's there. It can be dealt with. Potentially, the birth of Jesus gives us access to victory in this thing. But there is the experience of establishing that victory. Are we together? Number two is ignorance. Ignorance. Ignorance grants access to demon spirits. They manipulate on the ignorance of men and open them up to certain tragic manifestations. Then number three is disobedience. You know it, but your capacity to walk thereof in that obedience is not there. So these are the three access points. So if you find out that you are praying, praying, and fasting about the issue of lust or immorality or any entanglement, and it's repeating itself, you need help. That's the reason why God puts um, gifts to the body. To be able to help right remember our teaching for this course many are weak many are sick and many do sleep god has elected certain people in the body of christ and created platforms that can be able to help people deal with these things that's why we organize miracle services that's why we organize um, um all kinds of meetings that's why when we come to god's presence like this we take our time to soak in the glory so that the presence and the power of God can come and then address some of these things. So for that brother, you may need help. Seek help. Look for an anointed man of God, not just a counselor. Somebody with an anointing that has been demonstrated to produce results and it can help you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. My name is Luke. My name is Luke. It's talking about the presence of God. Okay. I heard of your message you preach about doers of the world. Okay. And you mentioned, I forgot the man name, but you say pursue of, of the presence. When we pursue, how do one pursue the presence of God? And how do we abide in that presence of God? Like in Psalm 91 verse 1, when it says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Sometimes I may get interpretation of that verse, but sometimes the interpretation does not suit me. So I'm asking, that how do one, what, do, what are the criteria for one to dwell in the presence of God and remain constant in the presence of God? Okay. There are parameters. Number one, you must consistently create an atmosphere. You see, I preached a message years ago called lo the law of atmosphere. Everything thrives based on the atmosphere created. The presence of God requires an atmosphere. The presence of God is invoked, just like you invoke spirits. There is an atmosphere that allows the presence of God to be made manifest. Are we together now? Worship is one key that opens up the presence of God. Your passion your love towards God. In other words, you're prioritizing him. Making him your one and only and ultimate is one way to get the presence of God. Obedience in scripture. He that keepeth my commands, John um, um, 16, 21, I think I'm right. Or 14, 21. He that keepeth my commands, he it is that loves me. And I will love him and my father will love him and we will come and manifest ourselves to him. So, the love of God is very, very important. Yes, my dear. Praise God. I'm precious, Moses. Um, I want to ask, uh, um, there's this friend of mine that I was preaching to. And um, she was telling me that there's no heaven, that we are going to stay here. There's no there's, heaven? Uh, yes, and there's no heaven. Uh, okay. So, now, we're getting into I've, denominational. And, okay. Um, she was not, I was not telling her there is the no story heaven. of uh, Lazarus and the rich man. I now asked her that, okay, where did Lazarus went to and where was the rich man? Then she asked me to open to Revelation 21 verse 1. 
And after much argument, she was now asking me that in Revelation 21, she said, and I saw a new heaven and coming new down in here. And you know, she was now asking me that, okay, where is that new heaven and the new earth? And I didn't know what to really tell. I just kept quiet. I was confused in that aspect. God bless you. Um, I don't know if it's the millennial reign of Christ or... I understand. I don't really... You see, we labor day and night uh, contributing our quota to help believers become matured. Are we together? You make people become matured by giving them understanding. Now, before I answer, I, I don't mean in any way, I know that there are different denominations, different Christian sects with their understandings, about heaven and all of that and um, i'm not giving you a denominational opinion are we together now there are many instances in scripture that lets us know that there is heaven are we together now very very important i, I think that um, it doesn't make sense to begin to make all those arguments genesis 1 verse 1 the very first verse in the bible in the beginning god created what and the earth now i think that alone answers first verse first chapter in the whole bible in the beginning god created so don't say where is it created god created the heavens and notice he never said the heaven heavens different planes paul himself gave us an example he said he was caught up to the third heaven that means there are other dimensions the psalmist said the heaven of heavens belongs to the lord so we know that there are different planes but there is heaven hallelujah are we together now the bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above not just the sky are we together now acts chapter one when jesus was about to be taken when he lifted to heaven two angels appeared and told the people men and brethren why look ye you know this and that and that he said this same jesus is it not the acts chapter one let's use it to answer at least let's use the words of jesus acts chapter one verse one jesus is going to heaven now and he's speaking to us or the angels are responding acts chapter one I, I don't want to quote it wrongly verse verse 10 verse 10 i know that when you read from verse 9 let's start from verse 9 it gives us an impression like he just vanished he did not just vanish a cloud received him a cloud received him and when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight verse 10 please quickly and while they looked steadfastly towards where heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel verse verse 11 which he also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into where? Into where? So we know that heaven is the habitation. The heaven of heavens is where Jesus himself lives. There is a place, a spiritual location called heaven. It says, shall also come in like manner as ye have seen him go into where? Heaven. Are we together? So that issue of saying um, there is no heaven is not true. Please, the Bible does not negate that. The fact that there is heaven. The Bible clearly tells us in many instances, Old and New Testament, that there is heaven. Jesus himself, I want to give you the ultimate proof now. Jesus himself made us to know that there is heaven. In Matthew chapter 6, when he was teaching us how to pray, he said, our father... Who art where? He didn't say our father who art around. Our father who art in an exact location, heaven. From that point, we hallow your name. Your kingdom come. So please, let's rest this issue once and for all. There is a real place called heaven. And, and um, there are people there right now. Are we together? And we hope that one day we'll join them. Now, what we need to explain is the fact that the Bible says the old heaven and the old earth will be rolled away like a curtain and then a new heaven and a new earth will come it is true that that very habitation of god 
will eventually be transported back to this realm. But it won't be in the similitude of these three dimensions. So it's not like we're going to have another three-dimensional realm. No. There will be another atmosphere that comes to occupy this space. This is the sovereignty of God. This is part of the mysteries of the kingdom. Where this whole heaven and all earth will be rolled away to, frankly speaking, we don't know. The Bible does not reveal that. Uh, this is part of the information that is contained in the age to come. Are we together now? That's why there are ages to come that carry certain informations that are important for the saints. So there is heaven, my dear. And every time you preach to people and they argue with you, don't turn your evangelism into debate. Politely decline. You may look foolish. Don't say, no, I can't let this go like this. Let it go like that so that God will be glorified. Yes, my dear. Praise the Lord. My name is Christiana Kaduri. Thank you. My question is, uh, like somebody prophesied to you, you're going to marry a man of God. And you have been waiting. <laughs> okay. Many ladies are happy. Okay, let, let's get the question, please. And Someone prophesied to you. And nobody. And said you'll marry a pastor. Yes. And you have been waiting. And the person has been waiting because... One miracle service, I saw you say you prophesied to one lady that she's going to marry a pastor. And one day again, I'm listening to one man of God. He was saying, anybody that prophesied, if he's a man of God, that the thing did not happen, continue waiting. Even when you die waiting, continue waiting. So, I'm asking that. So, when somebody prophesied to you, you're going to marry a pastor, and the pastor is not coming, you continue waiting. What okay. to do? That's a very good question, I think. We can use it. It's not just prophesying about marriage. It could be about anything. Praise the Lord. Now, um, I, I understand what she's saying. And she's communicating probably the pain of a lot of people. Because over time, we men of God have spoken to people. And there are times that for others, the prophecy have even come with precise detail. You are going to marry a man called uh, Ebenezer. He's in media department. The day you will see him is wearing a white cloth, dark trouser, he's holding a camera. If he snaps you, just know. <laughs> now, come Ebenezer. Now, Ebenezer. Come now, Ebenezer. Now, Ebenezer, you now come for koinonia. And Ebenezer is just snapping around and focuses on you. And your heart is beating. It's true. Ebenezer snaps you and goes to marry somebody else are we together now and now you are waiting and you are frustrated now there are three things here i want to explain i know we have all loved but let's listen closely now the bible says that even the ministration of the gifts must be done according to the measure of grace are we together two of us can be prophets but the grace the access to authority and strength the spiritual ranking that authorizes us in the dispensing is like you have two doctors one is just doing his housemanship another one is doing another one is a consultant they are all called doctors but are they the same they are not the same at all are we together now this is how it is spiritually so when we when there is the ministration of the word notice sometimes when you see me wanting to talk to people i call people out by the spirit and i just keep quiet because of what the Lord is communicating to me, sometimes it's like a feedback mechanism. I'm checking in my spirit to make sure that this is not an interplay of the flesh. And to also make sure if God wants me to reveal it to them. Sometimes you see me and I talk to people. I take away the mic because the information is very sensitive and may, is something that can be embarrassing. Are we together now? But let me tell you sincerely. Let me tell you this sincerely. One thing I know about marriage, and we have discussed that, make reference to my message, um, challenging discussions on late marriage. I think we touched that area where the issue of God said overrides the word of God. The Bible tells us, Hebrews chapter 1, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us through the prophets, has in this last day spoken to us through his son, 
which he has appointed to be heir over all things and we know that that son is the living logos the word of god and so whether it is joshua selman i'm not telling you to doubt the word by the grace of god we press into the word of god to make sure that we bring accurate words and there is a track record you can follow up the things that have been prophesied over people some of them have come to pass some of them are already on the way praise the lord now um no matter what it is if a man of god gives you a prophetic word and after a season you do not for instance let's use marriage i prophesy to this lady now and i tell her a pastor is coming and michael comes to her and let's assume michael is just a businessman you know that the natural tendency is for her to drive him away and say please you are not a pastor um he may be a pastor when he marries her god didn't lie are we together but sometimes it can also be that there is need for a check in fact sincerely speaking let me tell you it is very it is very praiseworthy to go back to god again we have seen instances in the bible where god spoke and under certain circumstances he had to speak new things again are we together an example is isaiah 38 when he spoke to isaiah to speak to hezekiah remember that scripture he came and told him hezekiah put your house in order you will not recover from this sickness you are going to die are we bible students so when i hezekiah turned his face to the wall and invoked the mercy of god god sent isaiah again are we together to go back so there is a possibility it's not a doctrine but through scripture we see that there is a possibility um the alignment of man can make god say new things i'll give you an instance if this lady is your wife are we to um, example example if this lady is your wife i'm not showing you your wife if this lady is your wife of, of course let me just put a, a little word of blessing we are proud of our ladies and if I say it and God is, 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 is directing you there, there's nothing wrong. Ladies, you should give me a happy meal tomorrow. <laughs> Are we together? But now this is the example. If this is your wife, truly, truly, and she says, I'm not doing, do you think God is going to yoke you and tell you you will not marry any, anybody again because of her carelessness and disobedience? Are we together now? God will not put you to ransom. The same way if God calls you into ministry and you say no, will he force you? Will he kill you? The same way he, he tells you that you should surrender all to him. When you refuse, he will not force you. There's hellfire already to settle that issue. So he will not force you. Please, I want us to understand that the plans of God can change. It's his purposes that are eternal. This is a revelation that would deliver many of us right now. The plans of God can change. God planned that you fly Ari to Lagos. And something happens. God will tell you to enter if it's in a cheap transport. The plans have changed. But the destination is still Lagos. But when you sit down and say it must be Ari or it must be flight. Are we together now? In scripture again and again. For instance, do you know it was never God's desire for men to have earthly kings rule over them when you read in the bible it was his desire that he remains their king but the people out of anger and rebellion they say give us a king and god had to make prophet samuel to go and anoint saul the son of kish to become a king are we together now yes it was never even god's desire listen it was never god's desire for david for the tribe of David to be the lineage with which Jesus will come. It was supposed to be Saul. Are we together? But Saul made a costly mistake that costed him that opportunity. Remember when he went and he was off, um, giving the offering by himself. They asked him to wait for the coming of the prophet. But he could not wait because the people were murmuring. And being a king, he was not a priest. Are we together? Because in ancient times, there were kings, priests, and prophets. They operated in different dimensions. Occasionally, the priests were also the prophets, like we have in the case of Samuel. He was both a priest and a prophet. Are we together now? And so in that incidence, 
um, Saul now start, he made sacrifices. And while he finished, Samuel just came. And Samuel told him, you have done foolishly. He said, if you had waited for me to come and offer the sacrifice, God would have established your throne forever. So it would not be the lion of the tribe of, or, or the, the root of David. It would now be the root of Saul. Again, we see that the first person God called in the Bible was not Abraham. The first person God called in the Bible was his father, Terah. Terah was tired and he said, I'm not doing. And then God looked for Abraham. Are we together now? So that's very, very important. I think that um, we need to understand this. My, my dear, if, even if it's me that prophesied to you and you are tired, come and meet me. Come for counseling and say, let's, let's hear God. Let's pray about this issue again. Especially where there is a God-fearing, very serious and responsible brother who is ready to marry and is coming around you. You are hanging the person while waiting for the pastor to see if the pastor will come or not. Don't dilly dial. Find the man of God. If the person who prophesied to you is still within reach, find him. If you discern pride and arrogance in him that he's embarrassed to recheck whether his hearing was correct, go and look for another man of God to speak to you. Are we together now? I know there's a lady who came one time, I think from Port Harcourt, coming to confirm because a man of God described somebody, a fair person, and she had been waiting. And there was somebody who really loved God. When she came, I prayed for her and I said, I, I wish you a happy married life. And they are married now, happily married to the glory of God. She would have been waiting forever for, for a, a yellow person to appear. So, praise the Lord. Let's celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, all these questions we have attempted reveal three things. Number one, it is costly to be ignorant over spiritual things. Are we together? It is costly. Just a little question and answer session, but it has exposed us to a lot of things. It is costly. I trust that with this little question and answer session, it has activated our appetite for more of God. You see, if you do not understand scripture, you will be deceived in many ways. You notice that every question I attempt to answer, I show you a scripture to support it because you cannot afford to answer questions with opinions and you will not know God's opinion if you don't study. Study. Study to show yourself, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word. Praise the Lord. Psalms 82 from verse 5 says, They know not, neither will they understand. He said they grow up in darkness and the earth is out of course. So it is important for us to be good students of the word. Not religiously studying it, but studying it with everything that we have. Hallelujah. Number two, corporate fellowship is very important. Is part of the principles and the requirement for your spiritual growth. You can see that a platform like this has afforded us an opportunity to know more and to learn a few things to strengthen our spiritual life. Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that comes from the head of Aaron, right? Down to his bird and to his cat and all of that. He said, dear, God had commanded the blessing. So it's very important. Corporate fellowship is important for our spiritual strengthening. Hallelujah. And then number three, ultimately, it reveals to us the necessity of the person of the Holy Spirit. Worship team sang the song beautifully. We're going to sing that song again. And, and then we'll sing that song that came. I can't even remember what we sang, but try to remember it, worship team. We'll sing those two songs again very beautifully. The Holy Spirit. This place is called Koinonia. It's our intimacy with him and our partnership with him that affords us the opportunity to access light and access his wisdom. The Bible says, ride prosperously because of truth. Right? You will only prevail by the truth you know. Not the truth that is available. The truth you know. It can be available, but if you do not know it, you will still die. There are still people going to hell Whereas the price for our sin has been paid for. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Um, 
just a few minutes and we'll be done we're going to pray and ask the lord very passionately very passionately to open up our spirits to open up our spirits very very important while seated just pray we're going to stand up but then i want us to pray while seated and talk to the lord some of us have seen this situation has revealed to some of us how clueless we are over spiritual things if you were to be asked some of these questions many of us see that this is like a a test those outside make sure you are praying at the back there outside at the window make sure you are participating in the prayer the lord is with you right where you are make sure you are praying and say lord please deliver me from spiritual ignorance deliver me from ignorance grant me access to the word grant me access to the word deliver me from spiritual ignorance lord i want to be furnished grounded in the truth the bible says that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and, and evangelists and pastors and teachers he says for the equipping of the saints the equipping of the saints that they the saints now equipped will do the work of the ministry to the end that we all will come into the fullness of the the, the measure of the stature of christ not being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine lift your voice and pray and say lord in this time and age in this end times where there is a lot of error there is a lot of confusion i pray that i be delivered from spiritual ignorance lift your voice and pray deliver me oh god from ignorance open my eyes to access light in the spirit Deliver me, O oh God, from spiritual ignorance. Pray. Make sure you are praying. Deliver me, O oh God, from spiritual ignorance. It's dangerous in these days not to lack the knowledge that you need. Number two, Lord, align my spirit in a way that I'll begin to touch realities in the realm of the spirit. Lift your voice and pray. Let there be a programming in my spirit. Let there be an alignment in my spirit, man. Have your way. I'm tired of wrong interpretation. I'm tired of interpreting spiritual realities in a wrong way. I'm tired of reading my Bible and not accessing the light and the power that I need. Pray. Align my spirit. I cry for an alignment upon my spirit, man. Have your way. Have your way.
everyone please rise as we pray this very prayer point is important oh god if ever you need a vessel find one in me lift your voice and pray use me oh god many of us have stopped praying that prayer use me for your glory lift your voice and pray lord use me use me use me i may not be a man of god but make me a mighty vessel in your hand Oh yes, have your way in my life. Have your way in my life. Use me for your glory. As an agent of deliverance. As an agent of transformation. As an agent of healings. Miracles, signs, wonders. Use me in the prophetic, oh God. Use me in the apostolic, oh God. Use me in the healing ministry. Take your place, take your place, take your place. Hey. Holy God, take your place, take your place, take your place. Holy For your glory use me for your glory use me for your glory have your way have your way hallelujah hallelujah i like us to pray any gift of the spirit any dimension that once walked in you but for some reason has stopped working. I like you to pray and say, Lord, revive her. Let there be a restoration. Lift your voice and pray. I used to have dreams, but the dreams have disappeared. Lord, let it come back. I used to have encounters. I used to have ministration of angels. Oh God, my prophetic dimension was sharper than this something has happened lift your voice and pray restoration oh god restoration oh god restoration oh god restoration oh god restoration of the gifts of the spirit restoration of the wisdom of the spirit restoration of passion passion for god restoration of passion restoration of hunger spiritual seriousness hunger for bible studies hunger for prayer hunger for fasting hunger for the house of god hunger to see his kingdom come Take your place. Take your place. Pray from your heart. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Take your place. hallelujah listen pay the price to discipline your spiritual atmosphere pay the price to discipline your spiritual atmosphere don't allow the things of the flesh pollute your spiritual atmosphere it will destroy you i tell you some of us is friends i'm not teaching you to hate people the character of the christ is love but you cannot give everybody access to pollute your environment with everything. No. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, please don't say it does not matter. The true spirit of holiness, let me tell you the truth. The true spirit of holiness 
is the atmosphere that brings the presence of God. The true spirit of holiness. Don't trivialize it. The true spirit of holiness is what creates the atmosphere of the spirit. Because he's called Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. There is a beauty that holiness brings. It's called the beauty of holiness. Culture your atmosphere. Take God seriously. No one leg in, one leg out and you are just playing around. Don't be careless with your life. Hallelujah. I just sense a need that we should make this prayer again a final point because like Samson, there are people who have lost touch with certain virtues. You receive certain things, maybe in a meeting or in koinonia or somewhere or an impartation. A man of God laid hands on you and activated spiritual possibilities. But some of us, you did not know how to fan it to flame. There are some of us here, the level of the prophetic you should be walking in now, if you were consistent with God, you would have been walking in notable levels, but you are still at that level. There are some of us, the level of the teaching grace, if you were only serious with the word, you read your Bible once in a month, but look what you are doing. Imagine if you read it every day. Hallelujah. He said, cast me not away from your presence. Take not your spirit from me. We need that restoration. And we're going to pray make this prayer personal listen you know where you are slacking in the spirit don't feel condemned but you must sustain grace to catch up some of us is our prayer life there's really nothing left there some of us is our word life you are a prayer machine but your word content is low so there is wrong interpretation to your spiritual things hallelujah lift your voice and pray lord a restoration mention the area you want him to restore you Lord, I need a restoration of your presence. I used to carry heavy weights of your presence. Everyone who came around me felt that presence. But for some reason, oh God, I've lost it. Pray. Restoration. I pray for you fire is going to come on a lot of people just in one minute there will be activations and impartations lift your hands father in the name of Jesus Christ I pray there are a number of people in this place that the fire must be restored through apostolic fire through prophetic fire at the count of three listen I want you to shout that name Jesus as you shout that name, for many of you from tonight, you will go back and the dreams will be restored. For many of you, right away, the healing anointing comes. Lift your voice. Father, I pray that in the next one minute, let there be a mighty restoration 
and an impartation as your people shout that name i pray that your glory will fall on them right now one two three receive it right now right now right now right now receive it my goodness help them that impartation that impartation receive it right now right now in the name of jesus receive it receive it dreams 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 the lord is activating dreams prophetic dreams symbolic dreams restoration of healing power the healing anointing the healing anointing the healing anointing hallelujah the healing anointing is falling i don't know why god is talking to me about healing the healing anointing receive it right now lord where are they where are they where are they take it take it now 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 the healing virtue i release it from the spirit power to heal power to heal power to heal in the name of the lord jesus power to heal power to heal in the name of jesus power to heal in the name of jesus yeah. I hear my spirit the gift of utterance utterance Lord where are those people like fire will come upon you some of you on your mouth literally utterance utterance I impart it right now right now right now utterance inside and outside fire is falling mantles of utterance of God. Hallelujah. Just one last one. And then we we'll take the altar call discernment this one will come on us many of you don't know what discernment is the ability to sustain capacity in the spirit father in the name of jesus i stand by this apostolic anointing activate discernment in your people right now at the count of three one two three take it take it take it take it take it everywhere inside and outside the ability to sense the impulses of the spirit realm the impulses of the spirit realm the ability to understand the language of God the language of God the language of God There are people here who have never given their hearts to Jesus Christ probably you were invited here for the first time and there are still people here listen please don't be distracted 
Those under the anointing, just leave them, please. There are people here who are saying, man of God, I want to make it right with my maker tonight. I love him. I gave my heart to Christ. But for some reason, I found myself derailing. And tonight, I'm coming to tell him, Lord, I want to start afresh. I don't care whether you're a preacher or whatever. Make your way to the front right now. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. God bless you. There are people like that. Appreciate them as they're coming. God bless you. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. God bless you, my dear. God bless you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Bless you, sir. Bless you, ma. Clear the way for those coming outside. Koinonia, celebrate them. Come. Keep coming. God bless you. Don't let anybody stop you. Keep coming. Those outside, clear the way for them. Keep coming. Don't let any devil stop you. Thank you so much for coming. This concerns your soul, your life, and everything. Lift your right hand and from the depth of your heart, I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus. Some of you, as you pray, the power of God, that hold of sin will leave you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I come to you just as a child. I ask you to have mercy on me. Forgive my sins. I receive Jesus Christ into my life. Join them, please. From today, I declare that I have eternal life in my spirit. I'm a child of God, genuinely saved. From today, the power of sin, of Satan, and the flesh is broken over my life. I'm a new creation in the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for our brothers and sisters. We love them and we receive them into the fold. Lord, you know the challenges and the encumbrances that have stopped them from being passionate about the things of God. I pray tonight that they will go back with renewed strength. That in this place tonight, may they find strength in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every habit, every spirit, every challenge that has held you bound, I cause it to its root in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and we welcome you into the greatest family in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, ladies and gentlemen. Please follow the ushers waving their hands. They will have your information and will communicate to you. God bless you. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bashkana kata branda kate katos, kate branda kata pakotos koto breke teke ne kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.